Good morning, everyone. I think it's still, oh no, it has been midday. Hello, everyone. How are you all? There's already three likes on the video. Thank you very much. <laughs> Um, so there's lots of you here already and you've been chatting away and um, so there's lots of you here already I forgot to turn the sound off on that I have remembered to unplug the phone so that's good uh, so Princess Wade Maria from Romania Michelle is here Louise Lynn Susan Caroline Noelia Andy Eileen Julie Nancy Deb hello welcome Thank you very much for getting up so early, some of you guys, as well. So, uh, yes, how is everybody? How is everybody? I've sat down to the sewing machine, and it's set up with the zipper foot and the royal blue thread from last weekend. <laughs> I attempted to put the zip in this thing. I actually haven't sat down and sewn all week. I have done um, some sewing-related stuff. There is a pile of 8577s there, cut out. Uh, it took me two days to do. I could have done it in one, but my feet were hurting <laughs> so um yeah 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 it's uh it's been an interesting week so what have you what are you guys all doing I see that there's a couple of you sewing already uh, Susan is trying to sort out the pleats on a skirt Eileen is putting in a sleeve Cornell is here hello so um yeah I'm going to attempt for like the third week in a row I think to finish this dress <laughs> just to get it off the mannequin and back in my wardrobe so that it's not staring at me constantly and making me feel bad about myself and not make, being able to make it work <laughs> um yeah cool, uh, Helen's here Carla is here hello Welcome, good morning. I have my cup of tea. Mum and I went out on a very short walk. It was only like 2,200 steps, but it was, we were planning on going one way, but then we bumped into the neighbour's dog. They were out on their walk and the neighbour's dog and our dog hate each other with a passion. We were probably a hundred metres away from each other and Susie started screaming. So we literally picked her up, turned around and did a different, different walk. So we haven't done very many steps today. I think mum's going to take the dog out after lunch and I might see if she wants to go again later but I don't want to guarantee that I want to go after the live stream because I might not want to I always get really tired after the live streams they um they are so much fun but they they take a lot of energy and that's not a complaint I'm you know I'm, I'm really not complaining but they do take a lot of energy so mm, yes yes oh Duvalet is here Natalie is here Natalie says, I made the Clio last night. I think I'm going to hack it into a tank and make a stretchy top out jersey rib. Nice. Julie says, just sitting home with the kids while their dad is having students on the stream. Nice. Deb says, I, have so I haven't sewn all week either. been decorating the salon and trying to prepare for reopening. Oh. Yes. Oh, Julie, I haven't watched the video yet, but I very much liked your uh, yellow dress that you put up on your video today. I need to watch it. Um obviously when the live stream's done are you are you embroidering leaves again today julie mm. oh i forgot to show you guys as well when i got my happy mail from erica there were two coasters in there so there was the starship enterprise and also this so i'm using that today to drink my tea i think i'm actually going to put my fluffy boots on because my feet are getting cold <laughs> I bought these years ago and they actually they're far too big for me so it sounds like I'm dragging my feet when I wear them but it's only because they're giant but they're so warm <sighs> which one's the backing mum's mum's got to the point she's putting backing on the quilt are you using both of them or the yeah oh, I don't know enough for the brown it has turned into a much bigger quilt than you were expecting, though, yeah. isn't it? So, okay. it'll, look, it'll look all right, I think. It'll look fine. It'll I like, yeah, way. I've got stuff to make a quilt for Faye, and um, the back of it is yeah. going to be actually, 
Would you guys like to see the types of the, the fabric bundles I have for, for quilts that I want to make in the future? Because I've got them all down here now. Would that be something that you're interested in? Let me know. But yeah, I've got, um, I've cut, it's one of it was foxy fabric and to get the, the foxes in a square that had a quarter inch border, you then had to chop other foxes with a very sh um, narrow border. And I thought I could piece them onto the back or applique them onto the back just so that it had like to, to use all of the, um, to use all of the all of the fabric I had. I think there's quite a lot of you saying yes. So I'm <laughs> going to grab the fabric and show you guys because I've got like I say, I've um I've brought them down here. Um you guys have seen my strawberry quilt, my lone star. I have I I way overbought fabric for that and I cut it all into strips, two and a half inch strips previously. So there's there's like a jelly roll quilt there waiting to be made. Um but yeah let me grab let me grab the fabric. I think I'm gonna make this black for Jane. It's a bit more interesting. But we'll do what I'm told. I would do what you're told. Okay. No? We'll do what I'm told. Oh. I'm 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 you're right, it's right behind. We bought some um, solid black cotton. I mean, you could do it with that, but she um she did specifically say black. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so there's I think there's three quilts here. Oh, okay. So I was given some of this. It's from Elizabeth's studio, and it's little panels. And there's only one that's missing a piece. And it's only a slight piece, so I'm I think I can get away with it. But aren't they pretty? This was from uh, Kawaii Fabrics. And it was just a little extra that they put. Oh, they're all saying hello to you as well, Mum. So, oh, hi. Um, yeah, I, I kind of want to, I don't know, make cushions with the panels or something on that. I think they're really, really a little nick taken out of one of the green borders so I think I could probably get away with trying to piece that or something um, and then these these were bought as a set but they're not very interesting kind of there's I need a a different type of fabric to add in there to add a bit more interest I think but I've got those ones I've got a meter of each of those so it's obviously not going to make a very big quilt but my friend Natasha was asking for specific types of colours. I'm going to try and make the lighting a bit better. And um, green and floral was something that she kind of liked. So I got that set. But I think I need to add some solids or like, you know, um, kind of marble boutiques in there for that one. This is the one for Faye. So like I was like I mentioned, I had to cut some of the fox fabric really thinly to then get actual squares of foxes to put onto the quilt. And then um, this this that was a, obviously the one from the selvage, but that's a better representation of the ones that I had to chop off. So I was thinking I'm putting like strip them those strips on the back of the quilt. I mean, I could put them in the front, obviously, but I also thought that would look quite cool on the back. So that would be a good way of using those. And then I've got some solid orange, a dog's tooth, spotty, moustaches, and large chevron. And then I've got some more of the foxy fabric and a little bit of black to go in with that one. So, um, can I stop you a minute? Um, on the screen, you look very, very, very pixelated. Yes, yeah, our internet's crap. And no, the, uh, it's, I've just checked it and it says it's not. There's nothing I can do about that then. Right. Okay. I'm sorry if I look like a potato. <laughs> well, no, it's funny enough. What you're doing on your right hand side is okay. Oh, well, in that case, maybe I need to pull the blind down. 
Yeah, Nicholas just said that it's gone really pixelated. Let me try pulling the blind down and see if lighting makes a difference. I was trying to not just have to do that. Can you turn the light on, please? I'll turn those on as well. Oh. Is that any better? Sorry, Jay. That can be any good for you. Okay. It's all right. I don't know. Jane's um, mask. We can deliver them tomorrow, can't we? Caroline says it's when I went to behind the camera. So is it better now? With the uh, no, oh dear. Um, I'm really reluctant to stop this one and start a new one because I'd I'd have to. It's worse with the blind down. Uh, okay, um, but the lighting is much better. Right? Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm trying to like angle the camera around this far, but. Better. Who's it? Sorry, it's <laughs> Dad's got me on in the other room. I can hear something what going on. I was just like, what's going on? <laughs> oh, dear. Um, okay, so the, the lighting's better with the blind down. I'll leave that down for now then because it is very bright outside. If it was a bit more overcast, it might work. Sorry, I can, they're, they're talking in the other room about me as well, so I can hear myself coming back. And it, <laughs> um, The left looks better because it's not moving. Um, Just don't move around so much, that's the answer. Stay still. <laughs> the entire time. Boring. That'd be really interesting, wouldn't it? How could you do it? <laughs> yeah. No. Okay. It's getting better. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's good. Okay. It's getting better. Yes, we heard you the first time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's cured itself. It's good. Fine now. Awesome. Yay. Okay. So did you guys not get to see the the orangey selection of fabrics that I have then? Because were they pixels? <laughs> so I've got all of those to add in to the foxes and I'm not 100% sure what pattern I'm going to use. I've had these for at least four years. I haven't told Faye that I'm making the quilt so if she turns up later, shh, be quiet, don't tell her because um, <laughs> I don't want to put a deadline on it. <laughs> years. Quite possibly, quite possibly but I, you know I've done some work on it. I've cut the and then I kind of didn't know what pattern to use and then got scared and didn't know what to do and didn't want to ruin it. And so kind of just didn't do anything with it, which is, I thought I still got the fabric for the quilt for my friend's baby as well. So I need to do that. Um, okay, so you, Sandra's here, hello. <laughs> Nicholas says, I love your dad, Sean, yes. Kathy says, lovely foxes. Hi, Kathy. Did you see them the second time round? Did that, was it better the second time round? Because if, it, if it's really terrible, I can... Um... I love that. She's doing a quilt for a friend's baby. Is the baby here? Yeah. Oh. It'll it's... be in college by the time... It's going to be two years old when he gets its quilt, but it's one with alphabet and numbers on it, so it's about That's right when they fine. start learning, right? That's fine. Yeah, okay. Oh, if I if I actually if I actually had the time and the energy and the um, the um, now to make all the things that are in my head, there'd be some amazing stuff getting made. <laughs> but yeah, that would be really nice for a gift for going kids, go, the eighteen year old going off to college, a, a quilt with the numbers and um, yes! on it, right? <laughs> Mum's even said she'll quilt it for me, so I really ought to just make it. But again, I don't I haven't got a pattern, and I'm worried I'm going to mess it up. I think we'll have to do that one month. We'll just have to like. I've got a pattern. If you want a pattern. Well, no, because I've got bought those giant panels for, with the um, animals on them. Oh yeah. And then I've bought the alphabet. 
Oh, I don't know kind of how to put it together. I don't but... like I did Kerry's. That's what I was thinking. Mm. And it's not it's not technically a quilt because the fabric I bought for the backing is actually quite a stiff canvas twill type thing. It's more of like a play mat. It wasn't meant to be a quilt for a bed. It was meant to be something that they could play on on, on during the day and, and get taken out onto the grass if they if their parents wanted to. That was the idea. Um, Kathy says, what pattern is the top you're wearing? It is the Friday Pattern Company Adrian Blouse in Lady McElroy Leafy Tropics jersey. Uh, yes, you saw the you saw the you saw the fabric the first time around, and you want to see the foxes again. Let me just show you that the fox is not cut up. So um, Robert Kaufman, I've made a dress out of the Sailor Foxes version of this, and I love this one. They are very very cute. No, is he even, is he even in there? Yeah. Oh, that's right. I wonder because I saw him wander off the other way. I can hear myself in the background. It's really disorientating. <laughs> oh dear. So that's the foxes. But yes, Robert Kaufman. And um, Faye's next nickname is Foxytron. Just in case you were wondering why foxes. Uh, right. Okay. Um, I think I think this is kind of like they're kind of different shades of blue, but I think they'll work together. So a lot of this is actually from mum from Saudi Arabia. So she may well see these and take them back into her stuff. Yeah, she's perked up immediately. <laughs> so there is a batik. You gave these to me. You you you, you rang me while on the on when you were at a pattern a fabric swap in Saudi oh, in yes. the Riyadh Guild. Yes, and you um got me this selection. So you wanted blues, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Michelle says that it's Robert Kaufman. How old is it? Is it? I've, I've had it for about four or five years. So um, I think I think you can still get it. If you put in Robert Kaufman Foxes, he's done loads of different iterations of it. So yes. Oh, Una's here. Hello. Una started her own YouTube channel as well. So go check that out. Um, I've got that right, haven't I, Una? <laughs> um, Judith says how do you make things so quickly I, I really don't um, then we've got two of the oh no three of the same print but in different colours so Christine is here. Bonjour, peeps. How are you guys? And uh, Cornell says, are you planning to make some more bags? Love the bag making videos. Yes, I am. I promise. I uh, I don't have any hardware at the moment. Well, I, I mean, that's a total fib. I, I have hardware, but I don't have the correct hardware for the bags that I want to make. So I need to do an Emmeline bags order, which I will be doing because they have opened up their wholesale side of things again. For a while, they were only doing... Um, they were only doing retail because obviously they needed to be able to socially distance and the wholesale orders was a different part of the factory and I, I'm not sure, entirely sure but they weren't able to do it safely but they have opened up the uh, wholesale side of things again and um, these ones by the way are Michael Miller fishnet I have no idea how old these were like I say these were from a swap mum got in Saudi Arabia so I don't know how old those ones are um then I've got um I think this one went in because it was the same sort of colors and there wasn't a lot of it but I might actually steal this to put into my top making pile because it's really really pretty and if I can get that seven five three four top out of 60 centimeters of fabric yeah that it doesn't really go with the other one so I'm going to put that over here <laughs> And then these are amazing. These are absolutely beautiful. So we've got some arrowheads, blue and white arrowheads. Then we've got a different colorway of the, it's not exactly the same print either. It's, it's um, similar, but a geometric print. And then these ones, these ones actually might get used for making into bags, but can you see the kitty face in that one? Isn't that stunning? 
isn't that absolutely beautiful? I will uh, have a look at the selvage of this and see where it's from. It does have quite a big selvage. Um, has got writing on it. Um, oh wow, okay, so it's Hawthorne Threads. And it says Bengal and then one and two because it is literally a two color print, but it has got a very giant selvage. And again, this is from Saudi Arabia, so I have zero idea, and mum, mum won't really know either where this came from, other than a fabric swap. So there's the all over kitty print. Oh, isn't lovely. it beautiful? Yeah, she gave these to me. Did I? Yes. Why? And then there's the stripy kit kitties Ooh. that go with it. Oh. This is actually quite stiff. I don't think this has been washed. Oh my goodness! Not if it's closing. That one. Oh, isn't that fabulous? I want these. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just, I'm I didn't just. Know I got you those. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Gosh, I'm nice. <laughs> <laughs> She's trying to steal my fabric. Yes, I want them back. I think I might take them back up to no. my house. I'm not sure they're safe down here. I would say not. I would say not. Uh, let's shall I shall I open this one out? Because I don't think I ever have opened this out fully. I didn't realise there was a giant cat face on it. <laughs> I'm not keeping up with the. You with can the... make a top with that. Well, that's what I'm thinking. Um, um, where was it? Duvalet says she sees a wolf. Yeah, totally. But um, it is it is called Bengal. Oh yeah. Can I get fire? Oh, wow, look at that. Aren't they fabulous? Aren't they beautiful? There's two sets of it. So the, the, there's the giant ones, then slightly smaller, then the dinky dinky ones, and then we go into giant ones. So there's two, two rows of those. I wonder how much of this I've got. I wonder if I can make a dress out of this. <laughs> I mean, it is very stiff. It hasn't been washed because, as Mum says, it's for quilting. So you know, you don't tend to wash those before you, before you um, sew them up. But <laughs> yes, Prin uh, Princess Way says that smaller portion could be used as an ad an a bodice. Yes, yes, it could. Mm -hmm. Or if I if I work out how to sort out that dart, the nine three five seven, the bow dress. Eileen says it's a border print. <laughs> Right, Crystal Stows and stuff is here. She says that cat print would make a great shirt or shirt dress. It's beautiful. Yeah, I want. <laughs> and then obviously there's these two that are coordinating prints as well. So you know, if I didn't have, oh, oh, <laughs> oh, the possibilities. Um, I mean, otherwise these would make fantastic cushions, or they would make um, a brilliant like tote bag as well. Oh, isn't it pretty? And now you may not have it back, Mum. <laughs> you gave it to me. <laughs> that would do for Jim. Giants and Mears blue and white quilt then. They've got a beautiful grey and black one from you. Yeah, yeah. Where do they want a blue and white one for? I don't know. <laughs> if Big Bird sees this, no, it's mine. <laughs> oh, gosh, I've got to try and fold it back up again because it's... I wonder if you um I wonder if you just gave these to me because you'd like pick them up and I went oh look those ones I think that's more like mum um, mum yeah and you didn't open them and you didn't see what they were because mum like I said mum rang me from um, a quilt swap at Saudi Arabia <laughs> and um, we're on FaceTime and she was sh showing me like the, the the fabrics available on the table and I was like oh those ones <laughs> so. I can hear myself in the background. It's weird. Are you still in there, Dad? There was no reply. No, I'll shut the door. Or turn the sound off. <laughs> um, but yeah, so 
And then I've got some other bits that I'll show you in a second once I have folded this back up in the way that it should be folded. Um, yeah, I didn't even realize it had that giant kitty face on it. I just thought it had the smaller ones. So there's that one. I wonder how much of this, I don't, want to, I don't want to unfold that one, but that one's beautiful as well. So there's kind of all of, all of those for a quilt. Although as you can see, the tones are different at the blue. So I'm, I'm wondering whether I ought to separate those out. Um, and I might, I'm, I mean, I'm happy to donate these ones to your quilting stash, mum, if you want them. If you don't. Well, just because I, I think I was if thinking, I, I think I was thinking they would go with those ones. But, yeah. But, you know, I want the, I want the kitties for me. <laughs> <laughs> and then, let's see. Hi, Alex is here. Hello. Um, let's see, where did I get to? Kathy says, I think cushions would be awesome with that big one. I, yeah, see, I'm, I'm worried about, I would love to turn that into a dress, but I'm also worried that it would kind of obviously distort the, the print over the bust because it just would, wouldn't it? Um, yes. Lynn says, are your videos of your bag tutorials on YouTube, Sean? Yes, they are. Yes, they're all in the playlists. Having said that, I think there's the Annette bag, the Celine bag, and obviously the NCW. I don't think there's another one. I haven't done a thing for ages. I might have to, have to rectify that. Um, Ju Judith says, will your bag be tutorials, be tutorials be the same as on your course? So with the retreats, what I do is I do do a YouTube sew along for the bag that we make on the retreat and uh, the people coming to the retreat get the cutting guide video ahead of time and then I release the bag tutorials after the retreat so uh, yes whatever bag I make on the retreat there will be a sew along for it as well because the majority we, we kind of end up with about 50 50 that finish and some that are just really close but just need that extra little bit so i like to have a, a complete sew along up for the bag tutorials as well um where did i get to marie is here hello marie marie says oh my goodness i really want to have a go at quilting i haven't i haven't made a quilt for three years four years actually yeah these are some of the um samples the embroidery samples that I did for my Lone oh, Star yeah. quilt because this is the Majolica square and I ended up just doing the strawberries without the border on it for, for the... But you could use them then. Well, I only did one, but I've kept it. Yeah. Because it just seemed like it seemed a waste to, to not, not, not keep it. And then this was another embroidery motif that my came with my... In, um, embroidery unit so did that one um there's butterfly oh you know what Nia would love that made into a cushion mm. she would really love that made into a cushion mm. birthday present or Christmas present. yeah and then you know my um green bag that I've been using with all the embroidery all over it but it started out life as a replacement for a accessorized bag that a velvet one that I had that I loved and that I literally wore for 10 years and, and wore to pieces and this is a very kind of accurate representation of the parrot uh, the peacock that was on the front of that and this is actually so the bird was a single embroidery and then the peacock feathers I added in underneath myself um so yeah that's I've kept all of those is there anything on quilted onto embroidered onto this bit oh yeah I've kept all of those because I was just trying to kind of I was experimenting with my embroidery unit this was variegated thread 
and then obviously the red flowers I did as a single color kind of looks like a cow's face I did actually put a different version of this on the front of a by hand London flora dress which I've since taken the bodice off of because I had to do a full bust adjustment to that pattern and it ended up with pointy darts and uh, I, I, I decided I didn't like it so I took the bodice off and now I just have the skirt of that dress so yeah that's that, like I say there's there's still stuff left over from my Lone Star strawberry quilt which is what that embroidery was from and then there's stuff up there from the very first quilt that I made which was a double wedding ring quilt for my best friend because she said she liked pink and blue so I, I went with pink and blue there was a lot of pink and blue But yeah, I decided the very first quilt that I ever made was a double wedding ring, because that's normal, right? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. um, anyway, where did I get to? So Vintage Glam is Una. She's like, just realised I was logged in with my business account, so just logged in as my sewing account now. And she's liked it with both accounts. Thank you very much, Una. Caroline says it's on their website with lots of different fabric bases. Oh, Caroline, what did I miss? What is on their website? Who's the website? Not very, been very good at keeping up with the chat, have I? Sorry. Uh, Quinnell says, oh, hang on. Quinnell says, it's amazing what you find when you look through your stash. <laughs> um, Una says, oh, not end. I had to look up where that is, Christine. I'm Irish, so not originally from around here. Love that part of the world. I'm not doing very well at keeping up with the chat today. I'm sorry. I'm too excited about sewing, showing you all these fabrics. <laughs> Michelle says to Marie, it's very fun and I'm sure you can do it. We suggest getting a quilt kit. It has everything but the thread and backing. Yeah, I kind of stumbled onto the Judy Niemeyer or Quilt Works website last night because I was I wanted to see how, how much the um, Mariner's Compass was and it's not for sale anymore which was really sad but oh. they've got some new ones yeah but they're also doing YouTube courses that go along with it so mm. it's quilt along kind of thing mm. and it's beautiful but it is $198 for the course the foundation papers the applique papers and and the um pattern itself so it is it is an expensive one but it was just like oh that's not the material pretty. no material no, no material <laughs> although there are people that are doing oh, there are people that are doing material kits that go go with it as well but i didn't even look to see how much that was but yeah it was 198 dollars for the pattern yeah. i'll show i'll show i'll get it up in a second and show you but it was just like oh but yeah no the mariner's compass i couldn't find it available for sale anymore it's been discontinued which i'm a bit sad about but never mind never mind um Cassie says a bag or a pretty skirt yeah so I've read that one sorry um <laughs> um Duvalet says well if the kitties would be on the bodice and plain coordinating fabric for the skirt or trouser it would make a beautiful outfit yeah that's also true I am really tempted to put that through the wash and see how it comes out I was taught you know I mean my June fabric haul I was um, showed you guys the African wax print that I have that's still really stiff it's been washed once I actually cut myself out saying I've heard that washing it in coca-cola works because I thought no I, I must have must have missed that and then in the comments there's at least three people who've said have you tried washing it in coca-cola it's like it wasn't me it wasn't my 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 mad, my mad brain going ah oh, yes this is a thing it is actually a thing um but I think I have, think I'd have to soak it in the bath somebody else recommended bicarbonate of soda as well to help soften it up so yeah i'm gonna have to do a bit more research on that one. Oh, and um, caroline says the bengal it's uh okay um the, so it's on their website lots of different fabric bases for the bengal oh 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 which website caroline i missed that part as well i'm that? sorry she says she's found the um the kitties i think oh i think uh, Eileen says embroidery is beautiful. Love the deep, rich tones. Michelle says, Sean, why not make a panel skirt with with the fixes and make a shirt 
in one of the complementary fabrics that's what I was thinking although again they're quite stiff so it wouldn't be I wouldn't I don't particularly like stiff shirts I don't mind stiffer fitted bodices because they're fitted but I, with anything that's like with sleeves on it or things like that I'd like a bit more movement um but yeah I'm quite tempted to play around with those kitties I think the 9357 would be a really good candidate for that. I do think that the I do think that the giant giant kitties would need to be a bag or a cushion or something because they would be too big for the bodice and they would get distorted. Um so but yeah. Typical. Yes, yes, thinking. Sal's here. Hello. Welcome. Good morning. No, good evening for you. Sorry. Sorry. Good evening. I didn't mean to point as well. I'm sorry. Um, everyone's saying hello to Sal. Helen says, oh my goodness, Hawthorne Supply Company has those cat panels in many, many different fabrics, including Jersey. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> this sounds dangerous. Oh dear. Okay, guys, let me know in the peeps group who buys themselves some of those Bengal pa panels from <laughs> I'm totally going to need one of those. Yep. <laughs> Helen. Oh, it's in the US as well. Oh, Helen. What have we started? <laughs> oh, it's in the US? Yeah. It's pay tax. But all the US peeps won't. No. There won't be any left by the time I finish this live stream either, will there? No. I'll get there and it'll be like, sold out. <laughs> You've got some, so you're fine. I haven't got the jersey. Oh, I could make a skirt and then have a t-shirt that goes with it. <laughs> Mum's <laughs> sighing. <laughs> um, Una says, I think we understand fabric excitement. Really, you guys? Really? Shocking. <laughs> I'm so glad that you do, though, because otherwise I sound like a crazy person. Michelle says, thank you for the info to Helen. Lauren is here. Morning all. Love that top. I think I have that fabric. Gorgeous. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you. This is the uh, Adrian blouse from Friday Pattern Company, and I love it. Um, and, yeah, where do we Oh, no, apparently I'm not quite up to date. Oh, why is this computer sticking? Um, oh gosh I'm really behind sorry Deb says hello I just wanted to say you're totally right about charm patterns it will cost about a tenner to get the princess coat printed on A0 so I'll we'll get printed from the buttonhole from now on yes they're giant they are giant Louise says hi Sean hello QQ hello peeps hello Louise welcome Julie says I think I need an ethernet cable for my computer oh no is it that bad Sal says, Julie, you can either get the cable or boost if your wireless signal. Caroline says they have jersey. We're not enabling you or anything. Lies. <laughs> Lies. Una says, just got the princess coat pattern from the buttonhole, Debbie. It comes with a booklet for instructions. I much prefer that they're trying to, try, I much prefer that to trying to look at the instructions online. I have to agree. I don't like having, if I have a PDF, I don't like having the instructions on online I much prefer a physical copy because I make notes on them and you can't do that if it's if it's on the screen Julie says yes Al or I can just restart my computer <laughs> Michelle says coke will take cow manure out of Levi's it's something that I never knew but I am glad I have that information I mean coca-cola have you seen they put in old two penny pieces or oh. copper coins into coca-cola and it comes out shiny and new and you think you've got to think to yourself what is it doing to my exactly. insides <laughs> okay that tea was actually quite cold towards the end but I have finished it um let's see Julie's going to talk to her husband about the internet. Noelia's here. Hi, Noelia. Julie says, oh, no more coffee. Michelle says, Hawthorne Supply Company is where your Bengal, Bengal fabric is. Oh. Um, Una says, I drove to the buttonhole in Chorley to pick up some fabric and purchased, purchased, 
pick up some fabrics I purchased on her Facebook live sales. I asked for the Hepburn pattern too, but it was at home. Wish I'd mentioned I'd wanted it. Oh. Caroline says, I think they print to order like spoon flour. Oh, okay. Um, Jenny Pin says, how about another Sirocco? I have lots of fabrics for more Sirocco's. Oh, yes, I need to, I need to, to make some of those. Um, and Julie says, yeah, coffee again. <laughs> Did you run out? <laughs> Michelle says, I can get you some jersey and send it over, lol. Oh, Michelle. Oh. Uh, Michelle already has a parcel. It's got our Christmas presents in it as well. There's what? something for you in there. Ooh. She sh she showed me. I got I got to give her um 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 insider advice as to whether you'd like it or not. She's I didn't have Christmas to Christmas present. Yeah. What? Yeah. Next Christmas. No. That's one just gone. She's not sent it because of all the stuff that's going on at the moment. That's but she will eventually, nice. which is very nice of her. But yes. Yes. Which thought it was very sweet of her to double check that you'd yeah. like the things that she So yeah. Um, wow. Nimue is here. Hello, Nimue. How are you, my lovely? Caroline says Coca Cola will take the blood out of fabric. I think Coca Cola is, is just like a cure all for everything, isn't it? Carol says diners use Coke to clean greasy grills. Oh gosh, why do people put this inside their bodies? <laughs> well, if you're poorly, you're meant to drink flat Coke. Yeah, because it uh, puts the electrolytes yeah, back. It's, it's got to be proper Coke, though, hasn't it? Not diet Coke. Proper Coke. Because yeah. you need the sugars. Yeah. And yes, the electrolytes in it. Oh, okay. Yes, now, I got told that quite a few times when I had gastroenteritis. I don't like Coke because it's got caffeine in it, but yeah, I did drink it. Um, Julie says, thanks, Caroline. I kind of pricked my finger making the latest dress and didn't notice until I bled all over the yellow fabric. Oh, no. Cornell says, can't wait to see the princess coat made up. Would you guys like to see the fabric I'm using for that? <laughs> it's down here as well. It's going to be another one of those days where I don't start sewing for an hour and a half. <laughs> Caroline says to Julie, I did that on the Duchess satin wedding gown. Baby wipes got that out. Good grief. Yeah. Sal says, just saw it, Julie. We'll read it now because emails. Laurie is here. Good morning. Hello, Laurie. How are you? Noelia says, Dottie Print in the UK print patterns and instructions if you want them. Yeah, I I, I tend to get the A0 printed by net printers or Dottie Prints uh, printers and then print the instructions here. Um, <laughs> there was a definite yes to seeing the fabric. Let's. Uh, Una says, let's see all the fabric. I'm not going to get any sewing done today. <laughs> Noelia says, I drink Aquarius when I'm poorly, cannot stand Coke. I don't know what Aquarius is. Right, let me put these quilting fabrics back and hopefully when I go around the back of the computer, it won't go pixelated again. And then I'll show you the fabric I've got for the princess coat. Um, Smagora says, any pattern tips for a nice summer dress? Um, the 8577, the Eve dress. McCall 6696. Uh, yeah, those ones. <laughs> Deb says, are you going to make the princess dressing gown that Gertie released on her Patreon? You know I am. <laughs> yes, yes I am. Caroline says, Hubs had an accident. By the time we got home from the ER, our son had cleaned the whole kitchen. He saw it on Mythbusters and wanted to see if it worked. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> what with Coke? Apparently, yeah, Coke, apparently, and Coke's good for everything except for drinking. Right, hang on, let's do this, let's, let's, oh, move the fabric around and apparently put the foot down on my sewing machine. Okay. Shall I leave that one out for veneer? Yeah, you're going to make her a cushion for Christmas. Am nice. I? I don't know. <laughs> Aren't you? No. Uh, well, I won't leave it with you then. Yeah. It'll just get lost. <laughs> You're gonna make me do it. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay, I'm right behind you guys, so hopefully it doesn't go pixelated again. How is that much fabric that heavy? Oh, right. Okay, so 
Uh, Princess Kite fabric is in the cupboard. You guys have seen this before. I got this from the Goldhawk Road. No, from the no, knitting and stitching. No, Goldhawk Road. Oh. You saw it. In the I got no. I got. I got the same type of fabric, but with different oh. print on it from the knitting and stitching show. I have two and a half meters of that one. I've got five meters of this one. Yeah. So I'm going to have a really nice, sensible black coat that just happens to have kind of coral, leafy bits all over it in color. <laughs> <laughs> so you know those sensible black shoes that I bought that didn't fit me, and I've returned. Um, well, I bought myself some replacement sensible black, sh black shoes, which were actually a third of the price. Um, when I say sensible, they are court shoes, black closed toe court shoes, but they have a giant glitter bow on the front and the heels are glittery. And then it's kind of like unicorn skin on the actual body of the shoes, but they're black. So they're useful, totally practical. We'll go with everything. <laughs> Did try and get sensible black shoes. It didn't fit. Oops. It doesn't want to go back in the cupboard. There we go. Right. That back. Okay, let's actually pick this up because that's getting closer to it actually being sewn, isn't it? Oops. A bit of a disaster today. Everything's, everything's everywhere. Um, so where did I get to? Cecilia is here. Hello. Julie says, please remember to like the stream. Thank you, Julia. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. Sorry, not Julia. I did, even I did last week. I remember. Oh, Thank you. Thank you very much. We've got 30, 34 likes and 99 people. Got 99 people. 99 people. Wow. Yes. Uh, Debbie said, oh, Rachel's here. Hello. Cassie says, I'm sure you have a video for it, but how do you store your patterns? Um, like that. And then my traced copies of them. So this is the, this one. They go into these file folders and then they go into those file folders up there like that. And they get broken down into dresses, tops, knit dresses, uh, sometimes into brands like Sew Over It. I have a Sew Over It file folder because that way, because I, if I'm looking for a particular top from them, I know it's in that file folder. So it's probably not the, the most logical of systems for other people, but it works in my head. Um, Rachel's here, I said that. Debbie says the new coat fabric is gorgeous. Carol says Coke is just like fantastic. Coke is just like fantastic in my great big fat Greek wedding. I haven't watched that film for years. <laughs> Judy says leaves. Nimoy says I love that fabric. I need to get the skirt I've cut out from it sewn for next winter, definitely. Because that would be beautiful. Cornell says, well, wow, can't wait to see Coke in that fabric. That fabric was, I think I got it for £11 a metre. They wanted to charge me 16 and, and I was like, no, no, I, I was here a couple of months ago and the gentleman told me it was £11 if I had five metres and the lady went, oh, okay. <laughs> so um, it wasn't the cheapest of ones. So I think there's going to be a different princess coat made up first, although I, I, can, I, I haven't released the vlog yet, but I do talk about it. I'm gonna get myself another bolt of muslin, uh, calico for making muslins, um, because I don't think I have any, fab mm, yeah, I think I might, mm, we'll see, we'll see. But that will definitely be the Gertie princess coat at some point. Uh, da, da, da. Um, Cecilia says a coat would be gorgeous. Princess says, Princess Wade says, I need a pair of shoes like that. Let me show you the shoes that I got. Um, okay. 
we go. So they look a lot more purple in this um, this image, but they in, in real life they are a lot darker than that. And the purple does show up when you um, when it catches the light. So obviously these are under studio lights, so they're looking way more purple than they actually are. The very mini mouse. There we go. So yes, completely sensible. I wanted some black court heels and now I have them. <laughs> Susan says, I finally sorted out my pleats and pinned the bodice to the skirt again. I might start sewing before you if Ptolemy, if Ptolemy will get off my knee. Oh, killed kitty. Eileen says, gorgeous fabric will make a fab coat. Looking forward to seeing it. Yeah, I think I'm going to start my coat making adventures again in September because mum and I have mum and I have a craftsy class for the 9044. I think that's right. Mm -hmm. And I bought mum fabric for it for Christmas two years ago and I've got fabric for it as well. And um, yeah, we need to work out how we're going to download our craftsy classes so that we can keep it. But we're going to make that coat together. Um, so yeah, September September's going to be coat month. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cecilia said I had I've had a dark green fabric in my stash for years now I need to woman up and make the coat I have planned yes yes and Duvalle says what lining will you use for this sensible coat oh probably you know the fabric I made my pjs out of the other day that's next to it in the cupboard and I was thinking that it looked really nice together uh, so if it's wide enough, probably that one, because that would be brilliant. And then I can use the rainbow bias binding to add piping around the lining on the inside. It's going to look so cool. <laughs> um, Julie says, please remember to drink some water. I forgot the water bottle, so I will go and get some. Yes, thank you. Um, Louise says, I can't, I can't not wear any other shoes than a sensible. Oh, no. Those, those are sensible shoes. <laughs> Princess Wade says to Julie, concur. Alex says to Susan, whoever Ptolemy is, it's a love, love the name. It's one of her kitties. Susan, what are the names of your other kitties? Because they have awesome names, all of them. Um, Joy says, love your top. Thank you very much. It's the Adrian blouse. Princess Wade says, now I want to see the sense that see that sensible shoes. Janice C. Hi, Sean. I hope you're well. I'm always, always in awe of how you remember pattern numbers. Uh, some of them are in there. Some of them aren't. I think I have the 9044 wrong as well. I think it might be in the 9400. The 9044, I think, is a shirt dress, I think. So, you know, I'm, I'm saying it with confidence. That's why it sounds like I know what I'm talking about, but I could very, be very, very wrong. Um, Una says, I think I'll make a jacket before I attempt the princess coat itself. Yeah, or the, the jacket with the little peplum on it. That could be good. Princess Wade says, wow, they're a great buy. Julie says, irregular choice. I need it all. I have six pairs. I love them. There are some, I mean, that, is restrained there are some you know how like I have a wall of wardrobes of, of clothes and fabric there are some people that have rooms of irregular choice shoes just irregular and hundreds of pairs like 400 pairs which is a lot of money because some of them are expensive um but just I, and I'm not judging at all like if you want to spend your money on on regular choice shoes you do you that's totally fine and if I had that much spare money that would be great if I ever win the lottery I'm gonna have all of the shoes. Um, yeah, I love a regular choice. I did buy. I did go off them for a while because I I used to buy their courtesan style, which are slightly pointed at the toe, and they just ate my feet. They were so uncomfortable. I wore a pair out on a date once, and I remember walking home. I was in so much pain, and I looked like one of those women that can't walk in their high heels. And I I, I was across the road from my flat, and it was like can I take my shoes off now in central London and not look like a moron? And the answer was no. So I kind of waddled home. So yeah, the pointy ones, I can't wear the pointy ones. And I was looking on um, eBay for the black nick of times that I got. And 
the point the, the the very shoes that I've just mentioned came up and I immediately watched them and it's like they eat your feet you've had them you've had three different sizes of them and every single one of them was the most uncomfortable thing you've ever put on your feet why are you even bookmarking these shoes no I was like, but they're so beautiful no but they started doing the rounder toe which is so much more comfortable and the, and the type that I have in all of my shoes now so yeah I very much enjoy regular choice shoes Oh, Alex says, I can't wear a regular choice. My feet don't like their shape, which is a shame. Your shoes are pretty. Yeah, I, like I say, Alex, I just, as I've just said, it's, it's, some of them were terrible for me. Absolutely, absolute agony wearing those things. Um, but the, the rounded toes I found fit me, fit, fit me work really well. Have you tried different styles of them? Because I know how much you like your shoes. Your shoe collection is awesome as well. Um, Deb says, can you make the dressing gown into cheap wearable muslin for the princess coat? Yes, and I probably will. Although I probably will still make a calico muslin to start off with. Because I think I want the coat to be a slightly roomier fit than I would the dressing gown. Marie says, lovely shoes. I'm a bit of a sucker for shoes. I think that was meant to say. Ruby, sh Ruby shoe. I haven't heard of Ruby shoe. Ooh. <laughs> Marie, Marie, no. <laughs> <laughs> Julie says to Alex, I don't need to wear them, just look at them. <laughs> Una says, I'm the same um, to Alex and with Ruby shoes too. Mind you, most of them are way too high for me anyway. Noelia says, isn't Craftsy Blueprint? If so, I've heard they're closing down the business. Yes, Craftsy is Blueprint and they are closing down the business, but they have emailed us because we, we didn't have the... We bought the forever classes. We paid more money for individual classes. We didn't do the subscription. So they are working out a way for people who bought the forever classes to be able to download them so that they will have them forever. Um, but as somebody, put, I think it was um, Jen from the Sewing Report pointed out that you then have the responsibility of this thing. Like if you lose the hard drive that they're on or if it gets corrupted, then the classes are gone forever. So we may download them to two hard drives and then keep them in firebox fire fireproof boxes at least 100 meters apart from each other but yes uh, crafty is blueprint and it is shutting down so if you are a member and you need to need to have a look at the information that's coming up from them at the moment susan says to gin ptolemy is my large half siamese tomcat calpurnia it my queen is sitting in my showing chair oh, calpurnia i knew it was a good name they're so good names I like those. Michelle says have they figured out how you're going to download them yet not that I know of Michelle and Charlie says one joy of being permanently in a wheelchair is that for the first time I can wear vertig vertiginous heels yes and just look absolutely stunning and not have the pain of yes Marie says love my shoes bit of a sucker for ruby shoe Cornell says I used to wear high heel shoes but got too used to flats now yeah I'm I do wear high heels every now and again I've actually bought the Vivian Lou heel inserts as well I wore high heels on my birthday last year like six inch heels on my birthday last year and they were they were comfortable that those the Vivian Lou in, heel um insert things were I was amazed I was actually amazed I'd taken flat shoes with me because I was worried I was going to be in pain you know like an hour in or something and I, I wore them and danced in in my six inch heels all night they did have a platform at the front as well but yeah the Vivian Lou highly recommend and I bought more and I'm going to put them immediately into my new shoes uh Elizabeth says have you ever made a bomber jacket with bus starts I have never made a bomber jacket um so no no has anyone else carol says i washed fabric for an adrian blouse yesterday you're making me want to sew it now but it's not up next Ooh, what is up next though but yes it's a quick make as well it's a very quick make made this with you guys a couple of probably a month ago month or month two months ago now i do like it vicky is here hello vicky uh, alex says to susan i'll consult you when i get another pet <laughs> She has the best names, I know. <laughs> Caroline says, I can't wear more than two inch heels now. Una says, okay, peeps, I'm getting ready to overlock my wearable bodice pieces for sewing together, fraying already. Should I disengage the knife or just go real slow? I'm worried I'll cut off the seam allowance. Um, I don't, uh, yeah, slow. I wouldn't disengage the knife, personally. 
Don't know, what does everyone else say? Vicky says, I haven't worn heels since I retired 13 years ago. H, she says, I love irregular choice shoes. I never found a pair that fit. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, Una says, frame pictures of the shoes so you could admire them in comfort. Julie says, I can't wear pointy shoes. My feet will look a mile long. Louise says, I wish I could buy American Duchess shoes. Me too. Me too. Actually, my, my hunt for a pair of vintage style black court shoes was because um, But Another Innocent Tale, American Duchess, uh, Mod Cloth, they all have the most beautiful vintage inspired shoes. But the, the cost of getting them over here is just ridiculous. And then I found Lula Ramon, which is where I bought the paint and Mary Jane's that I just tried, but they were so narrow. They were, I put them on, they were immediately uncomfortable. And then somebody in, because I'm part of the Irregular Choice Worship Group, the, the, the member, you know, they, they have a, a, an appreciation um, a Facebook group for that Irregular Choice Shoes. And somebody had put up the, their collection of Nick of Time, which is what I've got. And they had the whole rainbow and then they had black on the end. And it was just like, well, that's exactly what I want, the, set, the right sh shape. And who am I kidding when I'm trying to be sensible and buy black court shoes? I'm not sensible. So I thought glittery ones would be perfectly reasonable. I showed them to Wilson last night and he said, yes, they look practical. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, Una says, ruby shoes are vintage style. Thank you. I, I, shall, I shall have to have a look at those. Alex says, I've tried them all. I have even bought some hoping they would be okay. That's the regu regular choice shoes. Oh, Alex, I'm so sorry. Princess Wade says to Una, looking up ruby shoes now. <laughs> Sal says, I wore high heels for three days for a cosplay and it killed my feet. I was half Norma, Norma Bates, and thus only needed for Norma for one side. Yeah, that would really hurt. Nicola says, ruby shoes are great, cheaper than a regular choice, but just as funky, very comfortable. Oh my goodness, you guys are going to start a new addiction. This is not good. I mean, thank you, though, for the info. <laughs> Michelle says, I cannot wear high heels anymore due to my arthritis in my feet, so I get little grandma heels. Cecilia says, I've always worn flats, but I love heels, but my spine just doesn't agree with me that the beautiful things are worth the pain. Yeah. Uh, I have to wear flats, too. Yeah. And mum's, mum's feet are a size smaller than mine, so I can't even steal her, her high heels because she had some amazing high heels. There's some beautiful beaded pearled ones up there mm. that I really want. She doesn't get rid of them because they're so pretty, yeah. but they don't fit me. It is sad. <laughs> Alex says, I'm now looking at shoe shops online. Help. <laughs> <laughs> we all have the breaking strain of Kit Kats. I love it. <laughs> Una says to uh, Princess Wade, enjoy. Just don't say Una made me do it. But you totally did. Craft and Bev says, I cannot wear heels at all because of arthritis. So the only thing I wear is tennis shoes. Tennis shoes have gotten really pretty now, though. And they have, they've made an effort with them, which is nice. Marie says, I'm, heard, I'm shocked you've not heard of Ruby Shoe. I have 15 pairs. And my, yeah. I eye on a few more. Marie, you guys have been keeping secrets from me. <laughs> Cornell says, I'm going to give them a try. Oh, okay. I'm going to have to. You guys are going to see it. Very, very uh, first reaction. I'm going to have to have a look. This is unwise. <laughs> Sign up and get 15% off your first order. Oh. Okay. Ooh. Oh, and they have bags that match. <laughs> oh, wow, they've got leaves on them. <laughs> what have you started? Oh, my internet's not playing ball. Good. Hang on. <gasps> oh, oh, oh. Hang on. They've got leaves on them. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, they're good. Like those. Few or shoes. Oh, I like that they have lots of different heel heights for you as well. That's nice. 
yeah never heard of those before you guys have started a new obsession thanks for that they're pretty <laughs> Um, Deb says, thanks for mentioning Vivian Liu inserts. I've been looking at them, but didn't know anyone who had used them. I swear it was like magic. And I, it was my birthday night out, but this was when I was still recovering from the anemia. So I wasn't drinking, I was driving. So that's why I'd taken the flats with me because I thought, you know, these six inch heels are going to actually kill me. And I spent the entire night in them dancing. So the Vivian Liu, it's like magic. It's seriously, I've only used them on the one pair, but I went back and cause they're, they're quite expensive. Um, but the more you buy, the the better discount that you get. So I, I I bought one set and tried them, and then I went back and bought five more. And they do have if you sign up for the newsletter, they do uh, send out like a twenty to thirty percent discount codes every now and again. So it's definitely worth investing. But I would say, I would say buy one rather than buy like a bigger pack. To buy one and try it just in case, because my experience could be different to yours. But I. I love them. I think they're amazing. Um, Jubile says, I need a lot of self-control to not go and look at those shoes. I need a new pair as much as I need a hole in my head. I'm glad it's not just me. I was going to say, the nice thing about shoes is that they always fit. Um, but my my um, knee-high boots, my over-the-knee boots, have kind of been letting me down a bit recently because I've put weights on, but I've put it, like I say, on my legs as well. So I can't actually zip a lot of my boots up which is sad um, Julie says I'm always wearing sneakers Simone says I love the Adrian blouse I was lucky enough to pattern test for that release it's a very very cool pattern I like it a lot I need to make more I've got two so far oh there will be more Carol says bras I haven't got one to fit so not excited to try again Cornell says I love the Adrian too I've made five Alex says stop talking about shoes I'm a recovering addict and I put my and I'm putting stuff into my basket help <laughs> sorry Alex I'm sorry Una says longer term plan longer term I plan on making my own shoes I heard a podcast by someone who teaches how to do that she's based in London but she has online courses I think they can then I can design comfy ones to suit me nice Nimoy says, just did a shan, pre-reading instructions, need to make a trial run to see if I can turn the construction on its head so I can do French seams on this skirt. French seams all the way. Deb says, Miss Elfire shoes look nice as well. Maybe I love Miss Elfire shoes. I really love them. They are £155 per pair of shoe though. So... I am signed up to their newsletter because they do do sales every now and again. They had a 30% off sale the other day and I was so excited. And I was like, that's the same price as I paid for the Lola and Ramon shoes. So I was like, yes, I'm going to get them. And it was a June edit. So there's only a certain selection of shoes in that edit. And the ones that I wanted weren't in it. They did have the multicolored ones in that edit. And I was so tempted but no, I, I wanted a pair of black shoes. But yeah, Miss Elfire shoes, I love them. I love them. I've loved them for years. I've loved when they did their glass ones, like the Cinderella shoes. Oh, so pretty. So, so pretty. Yes, highly, highly recommend Miss Elfire. Although I have not bought any. I've just lusted after them. So I don't know how they fit or the, the, any of that. But yeah, beautiful. Alex says, that's it. I'm buying shoes. Aldo had a sale. <laughs> I can't wear I can't wear Aldo shoes. They don't fit my feet very well. Um, I had a lot of them because they were beautiful and they were just around the corner from my house when I lived in London. But they didn't fit very well when I tried to wear them for any period of time. They just fell off my feet. So yeah. Duvalet says I've done the research and if I want a bespoke shoe made specifically for my feet, the pair would cost five from five hundred euros. Wow. Having said that though, Duvalet the um, when they've made the last for the shoe to fit you specifically, they tend to, it tends to the price goes down a little bit after that because they've already done the hard work of making the shoe fit you. The thing with that is that you have to buy exactly the same style, just different materials day in day, uh, whenever you buy shoes from them because obviously making a different last for a different heel height or shoe structure, they'd need to make it again from scratch. 
there was a company called Upper Street Shoes, and it's now Shoes of Prey, um, I think. And they actually do make shoes to order, but they are specific. They, they do have, like, wide and slim fit and, narrow, and normal fit and things like that and different heel heights. And you can go on the website and you can design your own shoes and put your own f fabrics and materials together. And I have a pair. I won a competition to um, go to their actual place in London and, and choose all the fabrics and have them made. And they weren't ridiculously expensive. I think they were around about £155, which for shoes that are made to order is not too bad. But they, they, they weren't making the last to fit your foot um, specifically. They were, you, you could go on and you could go in and try on all the different styles that they had and see which one fit you best. And then you worked from there. So, but Upper Street Shoes is no longer, but like I say, there's a company called Shoes of Prey that have taken them over. And the other thing that they do as well is if you have fabric that you want your shoes made from, you can send it to them. So it's really good for brides because you can buy, if you, if you are working with having a, a bridal gown made for you or making your own, you can have shoes made to match precisely. But like I said, I think it's just an American company now. Um... Julie says, I'm with Jane on this one. Nicola says, I was sat here thinking of myself, wait till she sees the leaves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Louise says, wow. Marie says, they're the ones I have my eye on. They are pretty shoes, Marie. Cecilia says, see you a bit later, peeps, going to yoga with the hubby. Enjoy. Julie says, I need to trawl, I need time to trawl through the Ruby Shoes website. Yep. Caroline says, Joe Brown has some great shoes too. They do. Yes. Julie says, Sai, Joe is here. Hi, peeps. Hi, Joe. Princess Way says to Una, wow, wow, oh my gosh, they have brogues and Mary Jane shoes, you guys. <laughs> what have you started, Marie? <laughs> Alex says to Caroline, I like Joe Browns, need to check out their website. Sal says, I only have three pairs of shoes, casual, formal, and non-slip nursing shoes plus slippers. Sal, have you seen the Irregular Choice Do Men's Shoes as well? Just saying. <laughs> Um, Una says, hi, Princess Wade. Uh, do you, how do you reply to me so it highlights in my feed? Yeah, I, I, want, I want to know that as well. Oh, it's got stuck again. Why has it got stuck? Okay. Uh, where do we go? Where do we go? Where do we go? Duvalet says, Una, yes, that's why I don't have any as yet. Uh, sorry, um, Una said uh, to do to Duvalet, five, for 500, you could learn to make them and have a pair or two. Yes. Uh, Caroline says to Alex, they have heel height I can't cope with. I miss high heels, but heels and a walking stick don't often work. Julie says, I want to go put, put on my pair of heels but I'm, as I'm upstairs. <laughs> Karen says, thank you. I've been trying to find something for years that I couldn't that I couldn't wear my pretty shoes with. I've ordered some inserts to try. Oh, let us know you how you get on, Karen. I really hope they work for you. They worked for me. Um, and uh, there was a, there's also a YouTuber called Chase Amy, and uh, she she did a whole video on how to wear high heels with more comfort. Because I don't think high heels are ever going to be super comfortable like you're wearing trainers shoes I don't think that's ever going to happen but there is ways of making them a more comfortable experience and she did an entire video on that and she talked about the the Vivian Liu inserts as well Sal also has uh, work steel cap boots as well oh Simone says that shoes of prey have gone out of business sadly oh that's sad Alex says, I've just put blue boots in my basket. Someone stop me. Joe Browns fit me well and they are super comfortable. <laughs> why, why do you want us to stop you, Alex? <laughs> Henstitch Life says, I've reverted back to Crocs lately after having surgery. Oh, gosh, well, that makes sense. And Princess Wade says to Una, uh, I've just used the at and add your name behind it. Oh, okay, that's how that works. Rachel says, don't even get me started about shoes. But but you bought Dolce and Gabbana shoes and they were beautiful, but they did not fit, which was sad. That is the trouble with designer shoes. They tend to be incredibly narrow and 
crap. The the few pairs of designer boots that I had would not fit me now, not fit my calf at all. They are not made for real sized ladies. Not that smaller ladies are not real sized. That was the wrong cho choice of words. They are made for smaller smaller calves than than I currently have. Duvalet says, I was looking into Lithuanian shoemakers and yes, only the first pair is that expensive, but knowing me, I want a different style of shoe. So that would be a lot of money. Yeah, Duvalet, you'd need to pick a pair that you really liked and would mi wouldn't mind having lots of variety of. <laughs> Not a new pair every time. <laughs> oh, okay, so when you at someone, it's only them that can see it highlighted. Everyone else just sees the, ah, oh, okay, that makes sense. Because I was wondering, because like, when Una added Princess Wade, it didn't come up highlighted for me, but why would it? Because I'm not the one that needs to see it. That's, that makes sense. Okay. Christine Owen says, Hubs just, Hubs home, so need to go, so need to go short visit today, but probably a good thing. With all this shoe talk, I might forget heels kill my calves. We'll catch up in a week. Have fun. Nice to see you, Christine. Thank you for joining us. And Julie says, Alex, stop. <laughs> Una says, ah, oh, I know what has happened, Princess Wade. It was just, it just wasn't highlighting it to me. Ah, okay. Nimoy says, given how reasonably my shoe, reasonable my shoe selection is, I have a ridiculous amount of them. My feet are very picky and uncorrupt, uncorrupt uncooperative oh i can speak today alex says i need to have some tea and cool down i've been shoe clean for two years now i can only buy shoes when i need them and now i've just bought two pairs oh alex <laughs> i'm so sorry we are all terrible at influences on each other i'm not blaming just me today it's not just my fault Okay, so shall I try and sew the zip into this dress for the fourth time? Need to pick out all the threads from the last attempt. I've been sitting here playing with the zip and it's to, to have something to do with my hands, but also to make sure that it's not going to betray me and break like one that did last, last week. Duvalet says, I heard that Anna Wintour wears the same style of shoe and I just couldn't do it. Alex says they were on sale. It's perfectly reasonable, Alex. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like tell you that you shouldn't have done that at all. I didn't um, sit on eBay going through all the nick of times that were in my size and seeing which colours were available. No. Nope. That didn't happen. We're now 20 minutes in and I've started sewing. That's about right, isn't it? Judy says, I love shoes, but I'm not bad at buying them at the moment. I don't have the space. And I have one in, one out policy and it really hurts getting rid of shoes. Yeah. Yeah. I actually haven't bought shoes for a very long time. I wonder why. Because I've been buying fabric. No, because you've got plenty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I can't really wear high heels here very often. I used to like trot around London in my high heels all the time during the day. It wasn't just an evening kind of thing. I was just, I would like, I like high heels, but it's really difficult to wear them on heels, which we have a lot of here. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, I was determined to get a pair of black court shoes because it's something I don't own and I now have them, which is very exciting. Duvalet says um, that they made Anna Wintour's bespoke every year, just different colours and fabrics. I I don't know. I 
I can kind of see the point in that if you found a pair that you love that fit you that, that are semi comfortable and that look nice I can understand wanting them in every color because that's something that I do I mean I wouldn't want just them though I would want other things as well <laughs> Sal says, by the way, if it took a few months to find the heels at a second hand shop, they had to both they had to that had both for its look and size to fit a man's foot. The pair that I got was about ten bucks, but retail for $109. Wow. Caroline says, Hubs will tell you I ran around college in four or five inch heels. Yeah, I mean I used to I used to attend events and stuff, you know, for hours of sounding in high heels. I do wear them every now and again up, up when I go to London. But then I also have the, I, I wear my, my heeled boots a lot when I go to London because I, you know, obviously I was going a lot in the winter, over the winter, and um, I haven't really worn any of my lighter coloured heel or he, um, summer in heels because I haven't been able to go at the, the, in, in that kind of weather. But yeah. I also have been trying to take a smaller suitcase with me when I go to London so that I don't have to drag so much around on the, on the underground, which is um, definitely a bonus. Right, let's see if I can get this zip in. Fourth time's the charm. Misha, I just bought another pair of Peter Kaiser shoes and was supposed to stay on the floor and finish cutting out my pattern. I blame all of you for my sh sudden shoe lust. <laughs> <laughs> we all have the breaking strain of a kick that. We are all terrible. Oh you kind of have to giggle, don't you? Debbie says, I have massive respect for cosplayers who wear massive heels and platforms all weekend at conventions. Yeah, I, I, the, the, the people that do like the dryads or the kind of cloven hoof shoes as well, the ones that have no support. Well, they, I mean, they, they're balanced so that they, you don't have to have the heel, but they are hard to walk in. Oh, itchy eyeball. Duvalet says, I used to be able to go all night long in my 12 centimeter heels and now I'm in agony after an hour in my five centimeter ones. Oh. <laughs> Laurie says, boots are my weakness. I like boots too. I have a lot of boots. I have a lot of shoes, period. Shoes are good. Okay, side one is in. Let's learn from last week and use a white pencil to mark the waistband in this time. So I use my blue friction pen last time and I couldn't really see because it's a blue zip so it's not really surprising Julie says I want to wear heels at work but standing and walking around customers doesn't lend itself nicely to heels yeah I had to I had to wear heels 
when I was a croupier. It was part of the uniform. And for my first night, I had picked out these beautiful and incredibly high, like six inch high platform heels. And they were stunning and they made my legs look amazing. But I can walk in those heels all day. I can walk in those kind of heels, no problem. But standing still in them, which we had to do as a croupier, you had to stand behind your table. Oh my gosh, I was in agony. That eight hour shift was the longest of my life. So I went and bought one inch heels from Marks and Spencers, the comfort ones. <laughs> and then we were like, we were all trying these little pads that you put under your, the balls of your feet. We were trying all these different things. Vivian Lou hadn't been released at the time and invented so we were trying all these different ways of trying to make our feet comfortable for hours of standing still in high heels it was not the most fun i've ever had that is for sure Elizabeth says, what's been the problem with your zip? Did you say it was the fourth time you put it in? Yeah, so the first time I put it in, I then realised that I had given myself a giant one-inch seam allowance on the bodice. So this, I knew this dress wasn't going to fit me. So I have kind of, I took that zip out, which was the original zip that I put in um, to, to make the bodice slightly bigger so that it might fit me this time around. So technically I put the zip in once when I first made the dress I put the zip in again last time into just the just the waistband and the bottom edge of this of the skirt and then realized that like I say that, I, that I, there was a possibility of making it so it might fit me now so I took that one out I then put in the full zip last weekend and the um the minute I put it in it broke so this is the fourth time putting a zip in this dress Princess says to Laurie, me too, booties, Mary Janes and brogues are all I own. Um, Caroline says, I have eight pairs of shoes, same style, different colours. That that would be me too. Sal says to Debbie, it was literally a pain to wear the heel for three days. Simone says, perhaps I shouldn't mention all the other designer inspired shoes on AliExpress. They're my weakness. The other Simone, no. <laughs> no, Simone, no. <laughs> Julie says tying the two middle toes together does help I've heard that I have heard that um Eileen says I use a sharpie instead of a friction pen to mark my notches on this top lucky it's a colorful print oh wow yes Laurie says to Princess Wade knee-high boots booties steel toe work boots you name it I have them in my closet nice Cornell says, I'm off to make some pizza dough for pizza night tonight. See you later. I now want pizza. But yes, thank you for joining us, Cornell. It was lovely to have you. Right, let's get this other, other side of this zip sewn in. I'm going to go going and looking through so many websites after this live stream. I don't get paid until the 20th. <sighs> Right. We can do this, Zip. We can do this. It's going to be good. You're not going to do me wrong this time, are you? Because I actually don't have another one this colour. If this one, if this, if it, if this goes wrong, I think I'm going to take the bodice off and give that to Mum to make masks out of and turn this into a skirt. <laughs> there are quite a few people wandering around. So yeah, Lawrence, it, yeah. with masks um, with semi-naked ladies on them okay Thank you. 
Rachel Lynn is here. Good morning. Rachel had pizza last night. Far too much pizza. I want pizza. I haven't got one. I had one on Monday because my oven's quiche. working again. You made a quiche? You have a quiche. Is there any left? Yes. We had our quiche for lunch. Quiche. No soup. I have food. I didn't. I didn't remember to bring one down with me. Yeah. What, oh, what kind of quiche is it though? What? What kind of quiche is Cheese. it? Spinach. Huh? Oh, that's good. It's got no tomatoes and stuff in it. It's just got a slim one on top. I can take that off. That's fine. Oh, that's exciting. Oh, it's got peppers. Um, I can pick those out. I'm not sure. I can pick those out. Maybe I should just have um, Marmite toast. Have you got your soup? No, I've left it at my house. Oh, I forgot it. Yeah, mum, whenever mum makes quiche, she usually makes two separate ones, one for me and one for, for her and dad, because they like all the weird stuff. <clears throat> Which I do not. It was quite weird just making one. <laughs> this in the wrong way around or I'm just giving up on this dress I don't think I have or the moral of this story is that I should not attempt to do zippers online uh, whilst live because I am not concentrating on them in giving them the full attention that they clearly want that was my stomach did you hear that I did sorry <laughs> Right. Okay, come on, come on, please work. It works, but the boxy thing is not lined up at the waist. <laughs> Okay. It lines up at the top, the waist just does not line up. Okay, how am I going to rectify this? Am I going to rectify this? Yes. I don't want to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. Uh, Judy says, as my husband is on the stream all day, it's come to me to make dinner. He is the cook of the family and I plan to make spaghetti bolognese. Ooh, nice. 
Caroline says, I have to go and play upwards with husband. Maybe back later. Happy stitching. Thank you for joining us, Caroline. Judy says, don't give up, Sean. You can do this. Mm -hmm. I'm beginning to think I can't. <laughs> okay. It'll be fine. You're getting hungry yet, Mum? Yeah, I'm just finishing. It's half past one. Oh, okay. On my conscience. Uh, <laughs> Melanie says, how off is it? Where about? It's off by about half an inch. And the trouble is that, hang on, let me show you. The trouble is because if it was all blue, if it was all a blue bit, that would be fine. But the trouble is there's the, the yellow. It's not even half an inch, it's off by just under three eighths of an inch. But because there's the yellow there, you can really see the jog. So the top looks all right, but yeah, it'll bug me. It will bug me, so I'm going to redo. <laughs> Elizabeth shows, show us the zip at the waist, maybe we can help you decide. Okay, here we go. Arianne's, or oh, Arianne's Beanie Boo Studios, hello. Crafting Bev says, sitting here watching you, I always work on plastic canvas because I don't have to concentrate on it as I do with sewing, cross stitch or painting. Yeah, I clearly can't concentrate either. <laughs> nice. Dubelay says, I always pin the zip at the waist and then sew it might be helpful. Yeah, I usually do as well. I'm Like I say, I'm just, wasn't really concentrating on this one and it shows. It shows. kind of looked like it wasn't going to quite meet up when I got to my marks and I was hoping I could fudge it but it's like I say it's out by three eighths of an inch if it had been an eighth of an inch I wouldn't have worried about it but three eighths of an inch is outside of my comfort zone there you go it's poor fabric I hope it's gonna stand up to being unpicked yet again It'll be fine. Simone says, no, 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 that's not right. Um, Susan says, you're making me nervous about putting my zip in next. I've mm -hmm. put my last three in by hand. I was worried that my hand sewing won't be strong enough. Mm. I do base them in sometimes, especially if it's in a striped fabric and that you have to make the stripes match, not just the waistband. Carol says, I sometimes stitch one, a one or two above and below the waist seam first before stitching in the whole thing. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do with this one. I'm going to um, baste it into place at the waistline and then I'm going to sew it in again. Melanie says, yeah, I'd fix that too. Julie says, drawing a bit, trying to do, draw a D Gibson girl. Mm, nice. Duvalet says, okay, I'm going to give it into the pizza for dinner idea and we'll order it now. Be right back. Oh, 
I really want pizza. I have to remember though that the um, the local pizza shop is not the best pizza ever. It's, yeah, I was a bit disappointed when I ordered it after speaking to you guys last time. Becoming a bit of a regular thing sitting here watching me unpick this dress, isn't it? <laughs> They'll be sick of it. Yeah, I'm sick of it. And will you ever wear it? <laughs> well, I, I don't know if it's going to fit me at the moment, so hopefully, if and when I lose some weight. Julie says she's going to have pizza tomorrow, she thinks. Caroline says it's chilly here compared to last week. So it's roast beef in Yorkshire's for dinner tonight. Oh, that sounds very yummy. Elizabeth says, how will you fix the problem? I need to learn how to deal with my mistakes. So I am going to unpick this and then I am going to, because I've marked on where the waistband should be. So I'm going to base on the waistband area and then I'll pin up from there to the top and um, try and see how that works. Crafting Bev says, I've not had pizza for six months since it's just me and my two cats and they're not allowed pizza. I would eat the whole thing. <laughs> um, not good for losing weight, no. I did, I ordered the smaller pizza that they had and um, then I had it over two days because otherwise I would have just eaten the entire thing in one evening. But no, not good for losing weight. And I usually ask for extra cheese on pizza, but my local place, the, the place in the town over that delivers to us, um, they had, they, they put too much cheese on their pizza and I never thought I'd say such a thing, but there was too much cheese on this pizza. It wasn't nice. There, apparently there is such a thing as too much cheese. So, um, yeah, I was quite disappointed by it. But the, the we have two dominoes on the island, but we are outside of their delivery area, so I'd have to go and collect it. Which I think I might do someday, because I like Domino's pizza. Oh, you guys are making me want pizza again. Let's talk about quiche. Are you sure you don't want a piece of quiche? How, how densely packed are the mushrooms and peppers? Oh, very little. I only did it. Yeah, I can pick those out. Yes, please. Lauren says, I don't mind watching you unpick. It makes me feel better about all the times I spend unpicking. Lol. Yeah. I mean, this is the thing. It's like when you guys see me do sew alongs, I leave out the mistakes because to me it's a sew along. So it's it's not. It would, I, I, I tell you about the mistakes. I say to you, don't do this because of this. Ask me how I know. And it genuinely is because I've usually made that mistake myself and I want you guys to, to not do it. But I don't include the actual, if I've made a mistake, I don't include it in the sew along because I don't want people to follow along and do that thing and then have to unpick like I have. So I, I will highlight where there's possibilities of making mistakes and again, I always say, ask me how I know. It, and it's because I have made that mistake. But for the sew alongs, it just seems like a, a it seems like a better idea to, to not include the actual mistake visually. Um, sorry, uh, Caroline says, I've never ever eaten pizza made from scratch for the hubs but allergies mean that I never have and never will oh wow I know um I know I know someone who doesn't like 
cheese on their pizza or what was it they didn't there was something about pizza that they didn't like and they that's why they'd never eaten it and it was that kind of blew my mind that never had pizza but yeah if you're allergic to it that makes perfect sense uh julie says be right back hungry baby's hungry and Alison is here. Hello, Sean. Here I am. It's nearly bedtime here in Australia. I found some bewitched fabric in both blue and purple backgrounds. Looks like I might have to buy it. How is Chiana? I um, highly recommend the bewitched fabric. I like it a lot. And Chi is good. She is um, being very vocal at the moment, which is interesting to live with at night when you want to sleep. Um, but yeah, no, she's good. She's good. She's been very friendly as well, which is lovely. I was talking to Wilson the other day, actually, and um, he was like, uh, Chiana had kept me up that night. And he said, it seems like whenever I speak to you, you're always complaining that, she, that she's being annoying. And I was just like, yeah. I mean, she is annoying a lot of the time, but I wouldn't be without her, you know, ever. Um, and it is very different living in a studio apartment with an animal as opposed to in a house because when when we lived down here before mum and dad came home it was if she wanted you know she would she would go out and prowl the house and she wouldn't try and wake me up and it's not that she's trying to wake me up a lot of the time when she's being annoying it's just that she's you know up and about and doing things because cats technically are nocturnal and there are ways of getting them more onto your sleep schedule um and if I if I worked up there as well, I would make more of an effort to keep her awake with me during the day so that she slept at night because cats need to sleep at least, I think it's at least 16 hours a day. Uh, no, sorry, at least 10 hours a day, but mostly sleep up to 16. And you can kind of re reorient their schedules so that they're more in tune with your sleeping schedule and will sleep through the night. But that is quite a labour intensive thing to do if you don't if you're not with them all day because you know they get bored during the day so that's another thing that they do is they sleep so that they you know it's a fun time when you're home right Okay, so getting all the threads out again, <gasps> again. Again, and get them all out of the zipper itself. Oh, all with this quiche, so I'm gonna eat that. Thank you Did very you much. Want to warm? Um, no, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I can warm it up if you want it warmed up. Can you do that on this plate? No, I could put it on a on a different plate. Oh, yeah, if you want like Yeah, no, no, not at all. Keep your knife in thought. Right, so it gives me time to get all the threads out of this. We went on a very quick walk this morning because we didn't really have a lot of time to do a longer one um, and then for me to get back in time to start the live stream on time. Um, but Susie, Susie hadn't had breakfast before she went so she's feeling very hard done by and she's now following anyone around that's got food. She has had breakfast since but um, yeah there's this little pitter patter of feet when anyone's got food. What was that for me? No, Susie, it's not for you. Not for you. Where do we get to with the chat? Um, Laurie says, have you ever thought about a small blooper reel at the end of your sew alongs? I used to do blooper reels. Um, I mean, I'm, it's, it's, not, it's not like I'm, I'm trying to hide the fact that I make mistakes because, you know, 
human and everybody does. Um, the, 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 the thing with blooper reels is that when you kind of, when you're doing the wind down, you know, the thank you, so I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give us people, people automatically kind of turn, know that the, the video is going to end and turn off. And even if you can see that there's like an extra minute of footage, not very many people stick around to watch that. And that's actually quite detrimental to the, um, the algorithm and the watch time of the videos and things if people are not watching to the end, because you want to try and keep your watch time up as much as possible. So I then separated the blooper reels out and put them up as separate videos, but they didn't do very well either. And again, that's not overly great. So the blooper, the bloopers kind of like fell by the wayside. Um, thank you. There you go. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, she's following you around for food. Have you fed her her breakfast yet? What's this, Zeus? What's this? <gasps> Food. She's like, poor little blind bat. She doesn't know who to go to now. She's like, do I go to mum or do I do I go where there is a good smell? She's gone to mum. She knows mum's a softer touch and she might actually get some food. Um, Melanie says, it's sleep time for me. Have a lovely rest of your day, everyone. Thank you for joining us, Melanie. Oh, fly, don't want that. Uh, Elizabeth says it would be really, really useful to have a session on how to correct all of our fitting and sewing mistakes. It's OK to know how you've done a mistake, but no idea how to correct them. OK. Yeah, because what I mean, what I could do is kind of <laughs> film things as I go. And then if I make a mistake, it's like with the nine, three, five, seven, the lemon dress. I did put in the in the vlog showing you guys like the when it had first been finished and put the zip in before I'd finished it and then how I didn't like certain parts of it and then how I changed those. What's oh, hot? Mm, 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 mm. Okay. Um yeah, I'll have a think about that and see how I can put that together for you. Misha says to Caroline, what are your all allergies? I'm just curious. I have gluten and dairy allergy and make my own pizza. Susan says, can't wait until my usual pizza place opens up again. I'm gluten free, so it can be a bit of a pain getting a nice one. Mm. Craft and Bev says, I play with my cats quite a bit during the day, so they'll let me sleep. But one of them has my alarm clock. She wakes me up every morning about 5.30. I love them to pieces. Yeah. Um, if 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 I had Chi down here, I would try and keep her more. Get off my dinner fly! Go away! It's one of those lazy flies as well. It's kind of just not even really making an attempt to be annoying. Just sit on my food. <laughs> um, Laurie says so. No Marvel end credit stuff. But there were, there used to be on my very early videos, there was always the bloopers in at the end and there's quite a lot of swearing as well. I've stopped, I've stopped putting that in or I duck, I duck myself now if I did put that in. <coughs> but um, yeah, no, no Marvel in credits. Oh dear, that went down the wrong way. Um, where did I get to? Duvalet says pizza is ordered so now I don't have to make anything until tomorrow's dinner, nice. Caroline says to Misha, I'm celiac and can't take cheese or anything too oily. I can take cream and butter, but it's the oiliness that my stomach doesn't like. Sorry, there is a fly everywhere. Alison says, I've been snuggling at night with, night with both my rag dolls. Binks on one side, Maya on the other. Binks is jealous of Maya, so I have to keep them separated. Aww. Debbie says, haha, that's normal in our house. We have a Labrador. Misha says to Caroline, try Char Mix B and Viola Vegan Mozzarella. That's how I make pizza. I use instructions on the back on the Mix B package. Um, and yeah, oily foods are a killer for me too. Caroline says, to be honest, because I've never eaten it, it's not really on my radar. I'd rather have pie. At least now there are many more gluten-free things available. And Julia's back. Elizabeth says, I'm gluten-free too. I use gluten-free pita bread for pizza base. That's a good idea. Yeah. 
this is really good quiche. And if there are peppers and mushrooms in here, I can't discern them from the other other things that are in here. I shouldn't tell that mum to mum, she'll stop making me my own. Oh, this is so yummy. It's going to be a quick dinner today. Mm. Lauren says, have a great day. Off for a virtual walk with a friend. Hopefully you'll still be live when I get back. Love your lives. Nice to see you, Lauren. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Chat under the window. Hello. Um, Alison says, I'm about to make the Karen and PJs. Do you have a plan to make a pair soon and do a sew along? Um, probably not, because I think there is a sew along on the Closet Case Patterns website already, um, which is what the one that I followed. So... I don't think it's needed, but I'm very happy to try and help if there are any, if you, if you run into any issues or anything. Susie, do you think I'm a soft touch? Can you come back for some food? Hello. Yeah. Hi. What's this? What's this? Susie, what's this? I don't like tomato. She didn't even chew that. That just that just opened the mouth and swallow. Was that nice? <laughs> She's licking her lips. Mm -hmm. um, Sal says, I was in a live studio audience for a TV show that I was watching in 2018, season of Doctor Who, and they had the bloopers in real time. Oh, awesome. Michelle says, cauliflower works um, as a good crust for your pizza. I've heard that before. I never tried it. Laurie says, mums are the best. Mine used to remove a portion of chilli for me because I didn't like the beans in mine. Oh, that's nice. I always pick the beans out of my one. Um, Jane is here. Hello. And Julie says hi to Jane. Right. Let me just finish this. Now I've given the dog some food. She's not going to leave. We can't quite see her. That's that's her there. You've had you've had the only bit that I don't want. And now I'm horrible to you, aren't I? Yeah, you're very hard done by. She's um taken to stealing her food in the like she won't eat it out of her bowl. She picks it up and takes it into her bed and has to eat her food in private now. And she gets a raw chicken wing for breakfast in the morning. So she has she picks it up and she like she hot puts it through the trots through the um, front room to her little bed and she's like, yep, I'm going to eat this here. <laughs> Duvalet says, just got the appointment confirmation for the hairdresser for the 9th of July. I'll be going light to help with my growing, with growing my natural grey hair. I've decided that I'm done trying to hide the fact that I'm grey. I have grey hair. Good plan. Alison says, I didn't know there was a sew along on the Closet Case website. I have some gorgeous flannelette with vintage caravans. I've ordered some piping and a non genuine Bernina piping foot. You'll have to let us know how you get on, Alison. Show us in the peeps group. But yeah, I, I, I think I remember they have, I think I remember they have a sew along on their website. I remember following someone so along when I when I made mine. 
Mm. Hi. And Julie says, remember to like the stream. Thank you, Julie. Deb says, oh, the mention of Marvel has reminded me to say that the National Theatre has a home production of Coriolanus with Tom Hiddleston. It's blooming brilliant. I saw that live. I got to see that live. That was good. Um, but yes, it's definitely worth watching. Definitely worth watching. I watched it live and then I went to see it um, I went to see it at a cinema where they were live streaming it from the the play. So um, it was, yeah, it was awesome both times, but it was amazing to actually see it in, in person. Right, I'm just going to take this plate um, through and let the dog back through because mum shut the door between the two um, parts of the house and the dog's going to get upset. Come on, then. what's this? Come on, yes, come on. Come on. She's a good girl. No, careful. I'm back. Hello. Did you pave yourself? A Chan Dash is here and says, my hair appointment is in 48 hours. My hair is curly, so it doesn't look bad, but we'll be happy to have it tidied up. And Sal says, someone moved the mannequin. New. No. Laurie says, I love Cheryl from Stitchy Bee's hair. I wish she would cut it and just have the grey curls. She has got beautiful hair. Right. Right. Let's um let's try this again. <sighs> okay. Okay, so I've zipped my zip up and then I have marked on my waistband pieces, like the lines where the waistband needs to meet. And I think I need to, because for some reason the waistband is slightly smaller on one side than it is on the other, so that's going to not help with it meeting up as well, but I am not going to unpick all that again. So I'm going to make it 100% meet at the bottom because that's where the two yellow moon parts are, which is going to be really obvious if they don't meet. So the top's going to be a little bit off. But I think that's going to be better than the other way around. So I'm pinning this in. And then I'll see if I want to baste it in or if I'm gonna just go for it. Because I didn't pin it last time. I tend to not pin my zips, but I, I probably ought to. Right. I have mum bought me water as well. That was very yummy quiche. Mum does make good quiche. Mum also insists whenever we go out for lunch, she also insists on having quiche, quiche if it's on the menu and then she gets really disappointed with it because it usually has a soggy bottom and it's not good because she makes such good quiche herself. So, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Rachel Lynn says, do we ever behave? This is true. This is too Rachel Lynn. 
Susan says, well, I can't can see my task for next week. My overlocker has nearly run out of thread. I've not refreaded it since I bought it, the machine last year. I only started using it since lockdown. You can do it. You can totally do it. <laughs> oh. And Julie says you can do it. And Alison says, good luck with that. Just um, tie the thread on to the old thread and pull it through. That's what I do. I mean, I can rethread it. There are many videos that tell you how to rethread your overlockers as well if you need them. But I just tie mine off and thread it through. And then I, I, I you have to, I have to rethread the needle, needle ones. But it's the loopers that I find the most scary. I do it that way. Okay. Let's try this again. Again, again. I'm counting this as the four and a half. Oh, there's still some thread in there. Let's get rid of that. Don't want the excess thread. Let's get rid of that. Okay. Fourth and a half times the charm, right? Gonna need a new, new bobbin soon as well. This one's nearly run out. One of the reasons I don't put pins in when I sew my zips because I've just pricked myself with a pin and really hard. about the the thing that I think it was Elizabeth said about um it would be good to see how to fix mistakes and things like that if you guys um in the peeps group want to put up things that you've had problems with and I can see if I can shed any light on how I would deal with that um because otherwise it's going to be kind of like when problems arise Kind of thing so yeah if you if you do if you want to put things um like suggestions of what you'd like covered up in the in the peeps group that would be really useful um i might start a thread so that you can put all your stuff into one place really hope I've not got this twisted. So this is going to be like Groundhog Day. It's just me sewing in the zip every weekend. This dress never getting finished. This isn't twisted. I think I've done it right. If it is, I'm going to move on to start working on the 8577 bodices, by the way. Okay. 
I don't believe it. I think I actually have twisted the sip. <sighs> uh, okay, hang on, hang on. I have, I've sewn it and twisted. I swear, this is, this dress is cursed. is telling me that I just should not be making this dress I'm actually going to unpick the other side because I don't want to keep on picking the same side because oh that just feels depressing can't I mm. Alison says, I reckon trying new thread, tying new thread onto the old thread must be a method that machinists use threading an overlocker. It can be so, so time consuming. Yeah. Julie says, that's the only thing with my machine that I'm a little tired of. Does not tell me when it run out, runs out of bobbin. Yeah, I like mine. That I like that mine does that. Um, Susan says, I remember it taking me about 10 minutes to thread up my sewing machine when I first got it. Now I don't even think about it. I hope it goes like that for the overlocker. It will. Practice makes perfect. Um, Julie says, what are the peeps reading, listening to at the moment? Deb says, right, have to go do boring housework stuff. Have a good afternoon. Thank you for joining us, Deb. Churn Dash says, oh, Lord, we've all been there a few times. Debbie says to gin and pins to Susan, it gets easier. Sal says, I can swear if I want to. I'm going to rise above it. Uh, Rachel says, oh, bless you. I'd be throwing it in the bin by now. I'm determined not to. This fabric was expensive and I've bought two lots of it to make this dress. So I will. Nimoy says, definitely time to move on to something else for now. Sometimes it's just not the day. It's been just not the weekend, the day for like three weeks though, Nimoy. It's just... Ugh. <laughs> Susan says, I can't stop laughing. I know. I mean, maybe this is why I only ever should do like knit fabrics because I can't really stuff those up no I teach people how to sew this is how not to sew <laughs> oh dear um Julie says Sean based first you'll avoid the weirdness yeah I don't want to baste <laughs> oh dear I mean, to be fair, I wouldn't have noticed until I'd basted it in and then I would have tried it and then I'd have realised I'd have to be unpicking something. I know basting stitches is a lot easier to unpick, but this is coming out quite easily. <laughs> Laurie says, do not light that dress on fire. How did you know, Laurie? This poor fabric at the back here, though, has been sewn so many times. 
Okay, so this actually will be the fifth attempt to put the zip in because I've unpicked one side, I've now picked, unpicked the other side, so technically fifth attempt. Oh Churn Dash says, I used the zipper by the yard for the first time a couple of days ago. I actually accidentally pulled the tab off and had to go put it on again, which was hard. Then I did it again. Oh, yeah, I've done that loads of times. Susan says, you're hilarious. Oh, my. Yeah. I mean, you kind of have to laugh, don't you? Because otherwise I would be burning the dress. <laughs> no, Elia says you can do a Rachel, put it in the bin and get it out at a later date. I'm determined to make this buggering thing work. There you go, I have sworn. <sighs> Alex says, haha, you don't swear. I don't know if it's because of us or because you generally don't swear. Hats off, I swear a lot. No, I do swear a lot, um, but it's not good for the monetization of my channel. And these, as I mentioned a couple of times, these live, live streams have been the saving grace over this period of time because there's such long videos, which means there's a lots of ads on them when people watch them back again. And believe it or not, people actually do, which is amazing. And um, yeah, they've, they've kind of been the saving grace of, of, of the channel over the last couple of months because the advertising revenue has basically been cut in half, which is understandable, um, but it's also you know, ever so slightly terrifying. So um, the trouble is if I start swearing on the, on the channel, then it can be flagged as inappropriate for some advertisers and I want to be as advertiser friendly as possible because it is my income and my livelihood. So I do swear quite a lot, just not on the channel anymore. Like I say, if you go back and watch some of the early vlogs, the bloopers, there's a lot of effing and blinding of the bloopers. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh. Debbie says, oh no, try something different for a bit. Jane says, I keep meaning to ask what were the books about the Egyptologist, please. Oh, Caroline. Caroline, you need to answer that one. They're P the Peabody. Um, Caroline is the one to ask. She was the one that recommended. recommended. Um, Caroline says, don't tempt fate. Noelia says, truly madly guilty, guiltily by Lyanne Moriette. Moriarty. Julie says to Alex, I don't normally, and that's something we must all, all also learn our kids. <laughs> Julie says, just pull your finger out, Sean, and do it. I don't want to, Julie. I'm stubborn. I'm not going to. Um, Eileen says, good morning from Chicago. Good morning. Kenaholic says, I use a glue pen now when putting zips in. It's helped immensely. Oh, yeah, I could use my um, zipper, uh, my um, double-sided tape. I've never had this much problem with a zip ever. I should have just, when I had it in, I shouldn't have just, I should have just left it and not tried to alter the bodice. Noelia says, do you get monetized if we skip the ads? Okay, so the way my manager explained it to me is that it's my job to put video content out there for you guys to enjoy. It's YouTube's job to put the correct advertising onto that video content for you guys to see. And it's the advertiser's job to make the, it, the advert interesting enough for you guys to watch. Um, there is a certain amount of watch time that needs to occur for me to get paid, I believe. But I'm gonna say that AdSense is one of those things, it's like Fight Club, you don't, you don't talk about AdSense. Um, I know people who have mentioned how it works or how they think it works and they've lost their AdSense accounts. So I'm going to leave it at that description that my manager gave me, that it's my job to put the content out. It's YouTube, YouTube's job to put the adverts on it and it's the advertiser's job to make the content, the advert interesting enough for you guys to watch it. Alex says, if it makes you feel better, I spent six hours yesterday cleaning and rethreading my cover stitch. Yes, my favourite cover stitch ever, only to realise I had left it on the wrong setting. Oh, no. And I'm not encouraging you to swear. <laughs> we all have one of those moments, you know, we all have these, like, things that just for some reason it just will not go right like you know it, it happens to everybody and this zip is the latest version of that for me so fun times uh, 
Under 10. Oh, stab myself with me over my, my, my unpicker. There we go. Okay. Get out all the threads. I was halfway through sewing that other side in and I said, didn't I? I was like, I hope I haven't put this in twisted. It was prophetic. Uh, never mind. Never mind. Um, let's see, where did we get to? Dubelay says, I don't understand how our weather people are working. They send out extreme weather alert two and a half hours ago for hailstorms. And at the moment, it's not only it's it's not only not raining, but it's thirty plus degrees. Oh wow! Yeah, we had a, a weatherman called Michael Fish who got it really, really, really wrong um, just before, like we had all the the hurricanes here, and um, like you know, massively wrong. He's like, yeah, no, it'll be fine, and it really wasn't. But that was, I think that was in 87. So that was quite a while ago. You'd think they'd have improved the technology that predicts the weather now, wouldn't you? I mean, technically, if you've watched Back to the Future, we should be able to predict to the second when the rain's going to stop. You believe that Back to the Future is now, the, the future of Back to the Future is now actually our past? I want my hoverboard. I was promised a hoverboard. Right. Okay. Take five. Uh, where do we get to? Caroline says the Amelia Peabody series by Elizabeth Peters. First is on crocodile is crocodile on the sandbank. I think. Thank you, Caroline. That was for uh, Jane. Jane. Yes, that's the that's the book series. Michelle says, "Well, off to the farm store and grocery store. Take care. Taking you with me. Oh, nice. We're going on a road trip." Dana says, I never baste, but if I want to make an effort, I sew the seam together with a chain stitch on the cover machine, so it's really easy to unravel if I need to. Nimoy says, I'm currently reading through this year's Quantum Bang fiction postings. Nice. Sal says, HP Lovecraft collection of stories. Julie says, I'm listening to Nice Girls Don't Have Fangs by Molo Harper at the moment, and I just read the first chapters of another book about vampires. I'm looking forward to reading the next few at some point. Alex says to Julie, I was once sent an anger once sent to an anger management course, not my fault, and I was told swearing actually helps. We don't bottle up, up so we don't bottle up emotions and so on. Michelle says if you use a fork, it will help the zipper head put the zipper head back on. Uh, Susan says, I've been getting ads for chocolate and big suck it in pants. <laughs> I like that they're covering both bases there. Nimoy says, YouTube is determined to make me procreate. Judging by the fertility and baby related ads that I've been throwing my throwing at me for months, wasted effort. Oh wow. You know, you can tell you can tell it that you don't like those kind of adverts so that it will stop showing them to you because it wants to target adverts to you that you are going to actually want to watch and like. Uh, Julie says, We don't get we don't either, Alex, but there is other words to use. I don't care if people swear, just we just don't. Caroline says, I didn't want my son to swear when he was little. It's amazing how creative you can get with language, especially as I then worked in the academy and a college. Cherndash says, now I'm singing John Ketley was a weatherman, and so was Michael Fish. 
<laughs> Debbie says, ah, oh, yeah, poor old Michael Fish. <laughs> Dubelay says, just remembered, are we sewing the poof next Sunday? Not next Sunday, because next Sunday is the uh, sewing weekender, the vi uh, virtual sewing weekend weekender. Um, so I was going to ask you guys, actually, because I know quite a lot of you are going, going to the sewing weekender. Um, would you still like me to put up a live stream? Because I don't think I'm going. I don't. I haven't. I haven't bought a ticket as yet. Um. So yeah, would you guys still like a live stream, or shall I just put up a regular video and then we'll have a live stream the following weekend? Um. Because either way, I'm I'm happy either way. Not a problem. Julie's shouting at me that I need to baste. Don't shout at me, Julie. The trouble is, Julie, the, the more you tell me to do something, the more I'm going to be like, I don't want to do it. I'm stubborn and contrary. Uh, where did we get to? Jane said thank you to Caroline. Sal says he's wrote, written a story about an intelligent cloud. I, I, is it a is it a nice intelligent cloud or is it a bad intelligent cloud? Because I can imagine a cloud with mal intentions not being that great. Okay. Yeah, that's the right way around. Starting to question my own ability now to, to even just sew a zip in. Um. Alison says the $15 a month that I pay is just so worth it. No ads and Google sent me a Google Home Mini last last year at Christmas. Yeah, that's the other thing is that you can pay for YouTube premium. Um, apparently in Australia, it's $15 a month. I don't know how much it is. I would imagine it's comparative where, wherever you are in the world. I know Eileen has it as well. And um, you don't have to watch any ads, but you could, the creators still get, um, uh, there's, there's still monetization for the creators. So that is another um, another way of doing it. If you if the ads really bug you, Bless you. Nimoy says, we'll have to look into training YouTube because those ads are annoying. Thanks. Yeah, if you, I mean, if you're getting adverts for things that irritate you, then definitely think about um, telling it that you don't like them because th there's nothing more irritating. Dubelay says, yes, the pizza is here. I'll be here if you're here. <laughs> Nimue says, I'm not going to the weekend, so I'd, I'd be here. Yeah, I think I'm going to put the, I think I'm going to just keep the vlog, uh, the the live stream for next weekend as well for those that aren't going to the weekender 
because I, I know not everybody is going to. Right, let's just double check that I've got this the right way around. I have. Okay, fifth time's the charm. But if this doesn't work, I am putting this aside. Uh, let's see. Alison says, you'll be pleased to know that the Oli So Iron is finally out of its box. I was hoping to use it today, but life got in the way. Um, Eileen says, regular video would be my preference. Caroline says, I'm not going to the weekender, but whatever suits you. Yeah, obviously, if I do buy a ticket, then I, 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 I will put a regular video up. Um, Julie says, I'd love a live stream. I'm not going. HSO says, I used to get baby and engagement ring ads on Facebook all the time. So I changed my age to 98. I get ads for double glazing and life insurance now. <laughs> awesome. Nicola says, I'd love a live stream as I'm not attending the weekender. So it's my day switching off from the world and I'd really miss you all. Rachel then says, since you're stubborn and contrary, no, Sean, don't base. That would be horrid. <laughs> exactly the type of uh, reverse psychology that would work on me <laughs> Sal says I'd love a live stream Julie says the yellow dress I just made is about half of it is hand sewn based Eileen says just finished my top it's definitely wearable muslin but the next version will need a few tweaks it's very light and colourful top just as the weather cools yes Eileen says I love premium I hate ads I like feeling that I'm contributing to my favourite creators Sal says, the cloud is not nice. Think day after tomorrow, but the cloud is red in flames. Oh, dear. Noelia says, ads don't bother me, but occasionally I get some that are five minutes long, so I do skip them. Yeah, uh, mum ended up with a 22-minute ad once, uh, Stephen Fry reading her a story, and she was like, I love you, but no. <laughs> um, Julie says, oh, what's going on with Sue's? Uh, Debbie says, fingers crossed. Nicola says, the next time we, we all need the next instalment of Zip In, Zip Out. <laughs> I'm not going to be sewing this dress next week. I'm double checking this like for the third time now. Because I feel like an idiot. Right. Yeah, that's right. It's in the it's pinned in the right way. I've got the waist pinned in and matching up. Oh. I was going to do, I was going to sew this dress this week off camera and just show you it guys finished because I was just like, it's just, it's fighting me every step of the way. Let's, let's move on to something else. I was like, no, I can do this. Still not sure if that's 100% true. Never mind. If this one messes up, I will base it in for the next time. In fact, no, if this one messes up, I'm going to uh, move on to something else. Because otherwise this dress could end up in the bin.
Okay. Run across everything for me, please. Okay, well, it's not twisted. Okay, so the bottom matches up, the top doesn't match up, but the waistband is actually a slightly different width on one side than the other, and the bit that doesn't match up is in the blue, and the bit that does match up is on the yellow. So I am going to call that good. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, we have a doctor here. Hello, welcome. I'm sorry, I'm not going to try and pronounce your surname because I am going to get that hideously wrong. Oh, did, oh, did I check the top? Yeah, they're, they're close enough. That's fine. Right. Okay, so, <laughs> can't believe that took five attempts to get that thing in, never mind. And this zip's working as well, it didn't break, yay. Right, let's finish off the top edge. Um, Oh, where do we go? Where do we go? Alison says, did you buy the new Jennifer Lauren handmade collots pattern? I did indeed. Julie says, you can do it, Sean. Thank you, Julie. Ruth Ann says, good morning. Good morning. Sal is, says, I was going to call the story Cloudy with a Chance of Death, but Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs came out, so I changed it to Weather, Force, weather Forecast is Death. Una says, hello, I'm back, Wave. Hi, Una. Siobhan says, hello, and good morning from the US. Hello. Nimue says yay. Susan says hallelujah. Rachel says yay. <laughs> Simone says it's brilliant. Well done. Siobhan says I'm new to your channel. This live stream is great. I've just found your channel during the quarantine. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. And um, this is this today in today's episode of the live stream. I should be sewing in a zip all of the times. All of the times. <laughs> oh dear. It's fine it's totally fine right let's get this sewn in um joan from california is here hello welcome caroline bought the pattern as well it's so pretty yeah i uh, I, I really like the, the that new pattern i like i like the button the closure as the closure method as well i think it's really nice have not started making it yet though have i i need to get it sent off to the printers to have it printed up. And I'm gonna wait till I've got a few more because I tend to get sort of five or six printed at one, any one time when I'm having patterns printed. Right, let's finish off the top of the zip. I might actually end up with a finished dress today, guys. Would be nice. Mm -hmm. I've got um Aha's take on me in my head. Yeah. I've been watching that acoustic version I shared on the um peeps group a lot <laughs> for reasons. There was one comment about the um, the Great British Sewing Bee this week. Everyone was enjoying the music in it a lot, and it was good. It was very good. And I was I, I was born in seventy nine, so I was growing up as a child in the in the eighties, 
Um, but yeah, I really do. Do you like the music? Okay. My stomach is still making a lot of noise. need to tweak that a little bit because top of the zip's not pretty either. Um, Jay Willett is here. Hello, welcome. Caroline says at least the 8577 doesn't have a zip. No, that's, that's one of the nice things I like about that. Una says you're still sewing the same zip. Uh, Una, I sewed it and twisted. I had to unpick it again. <laughs> Today was not my day. This dress really just didn't want to be remade, did it? Okay. You know, after all that, you can really see where the um, previous zipper was in, like the big the seam allowance that I used. I'm wondering when I wash it if that'll come out. It should do, shouldn't it? No. Oh. Yeah. The little zipper that could, says Sal. <laughs> Rachel says she finished the Bastion clots yesterday and they're lovely. Susan says, after this week's sewing bee, you're doing great. <laughs> Eileen says, yay for the zip and for being stubborn determined. Caroline says, so vintage glam. Uh, so, you know, don't ask. It's been a mare. <laughs> Rachel says, uh, Alison says, hello to Rachel. How did Pluto get on with the vets um, the other week? Is he okay? Julie says, it was 80s. It was cool. Uh, Rachel says, yes, the Pluto's fine. Una says to Caroline, guess we've not been gone that long, maybe an hour. Oh no, Sean, blame this was distracting you. Oh, I had, I did, I did blame you guys, yes. <laughs> Eileen says, today is your day, you triumphed. This is true. And D. Sebastian says, persistence paid off for the zipper set in. Greetings from New York City, Dagmar. Hi, Dagmar, welcome. Alison says to Rachel, that's good. He is so gorgeous. I'm looking forward to your weekly vlog this week. I have the Bastien Colots printed out, but there are there's a lot of pages. Right, I'm just going to fudge the top of this side because it's a little bit otherwise the top of the top of the dress is going to be a little bit uneven so i just want to fudge this a little bit it's all about this fudging with this dress can I think yeah that's better I'm just gonna check it's better actually though I haven't worn this dress I mean I wore it when it was a short dress but I haven't worn it for a good when did I wear it last it was Halloween when I was dating Oh God, that guy. So it would have been four, yeah, four years ago since I could get into this dress. Right, let's get the waist sewn in. I want to offset that one. Too. So this bit up in. Oh, 
Where did we get to? Duvalle says, okay, after three European sized pizza slices, I'm feeling like I, I'm in a food coma. I haven't had pizza in the last four months. Was it nice though, Duvalle? Did you enjoy it? Empress Lola, hello from Atlanta, the US. Hello, welcome. Sal says, I was born in 82. The 80s was the best growing up, best kids movies and TV shows and toys. Nicola says, you better wear that dress next Sunday with the new shoes. The thing is, Nicola, I'm not 100% convinced that this is going to actually fit me at the moment. I think it's going to be um, too big for, uh, too small for me, sorry. Even having let the, the bodice out because they're very tight on me, my Anna dresses at the moment. So I'm not 100% sure it's going to fit. But it's also one that I didn't want to just uh, leave to languish in the um, in the mending mending fold, uh, bag because I, I was like, oh yeah, this will be a quick a quick refashion. <laughs> Goes to show, doesn't it? Yeah, and I can't wear high heels when I sew. Um, I used to when I when I worked in the in the shop and and had my own place. I I would dress up every day to go to work, and I used to wear heels, but I'd end up having to take them off when I got to work because I, I just couldn't um, sew with high heels on. It's like driving with high heels. I find that quite difficult as well. I think that's when I actually stopped wearing high heels quite so much is when I learned to drive because I really just found it was a big struggle to um, to actually have heels on and drive at the same time. Nicola says, sorry, teen daughter is being an idiot. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that's in. Um, Debbie says, the 80s were just amazing. I was in my teens to early 20s and so much fun. Julie says, I think you could count time in, in guests. I, in guys sorry I don't understand that one Una says quick fashion quick refashion equals oxymoron yes Duvalet says it was very good I'm lucky to have had good pizza place 15 minutes from my house I've tried two new flavors in it Ooh, nice Alison says I was a teenager in the 80s I remember the big hair neon colors choose life t-shirts the ghetto blasters rap dancing and the music I hated tears for fears and die mania yes Alex says, I don't drive in heels either, and I wear he high heels all the time. Yeah, I had I ended up with, like, flats for driving. And then then some uh, some of my shoes that I wanted to wear, though, were, like, strappy boots and things like that that are a real pain in the ass to take on and off. So it got to the point where it was like, oh, I just won't wear them. Uh, Nimoy says, I sew in my socks. Driving in heels depends on the heels. I've definitely packed flats to drive in on some occasions. 
Alex says, I also love the 80s episode of The Great British Sewing Bee. And Dubele says, I sew barefoot or in socks, but I can easily drive in heels. It's just the back of the heel that gets damaged. So I try to avoid driving in them as much as possible. Susan says, I need to either be barefoot or in socks to sew on my sewing machine as well. Yeah. I remember I went in to work. I had on a dress and some thigh high boots. And um, yeah, I went in and tried to sew in my thigh high boots. And I was just like, yeah, that's not going to happen. And then standing to cut out all day was also a bit of a like, uh, yeah, this was not the most bright idea I've ever had. Okay, that's fine. So I'm just going to trim off a bit of excess from that corner. Let's get this other side sewn in. Nicholas says, I can remember all the words to 80 songs, but I can't remember what I did 10 minutes ago. <laughs> it's weird how certain stuff gets lodged in your brain. But yeah, like I said, I've got the aha song in my head at the moment, which I very much enjoy. Obviously, I can't sing it. Uh, I mean, I can't sing anyway, so like nobody needs to hear that, but I can't sort of like because of copyright issues. That would be another thing to demonetize the channel, which would not be good. Debbie says, I sew barefoot too. Sal says, I can say that my birthday is the dark crystal because we were born the same day the movie was released in cinemas and the day I was born. Ah. Duvalle says, my sister wants to chat, so I'll be back later. It was nice to see you. And Rachel Lynn is um, coming back in a little bit as well. It's nice to see you too, my lovely. Thank you for coming and joining us. Hopefully there'll be a finished dress when you come back. <laughs> right, my bobbin's got 10% on it, so I can sew this one. I don't think I'm going to get the back seam, seam sewn down with this bobbin, though. I think I'm going to need a new one. That's fine. That's totally fine. Linnea is here. Hello, late today, feeling a bit down, but then I thought I would join anyway. Might make me feel better. Oh, I hope we do, Linnea, but it's lovely to see you. Alex says, I'm officially allowed to have a new machine. Can't go to the showroom, though, at the moment. How come you're officially allowed to have a new one, Alex? This is exciting. This is definitely one of those dresses that I wouldn't want anyone to look at close, look at closely on the inside. I mean, once the lining's sewn down, you're not going to be able to see anything really. But yeah. I'm, I'm going to have that particular line of Aha's take on me going around in my head all day unless I think of something else. Oh 
Okay. We need to think talk we'll talk about other things, Pete, because otherwise I'm gonna start singing and nobody needs to hear that. Okay. Nobody needs to hear that at all. Okay. Huh. I'm happy with that. You done it. Right, I had to, had to unpick the zip again. You did. I sewed it in twisted. Oh, Sean! <laughs> they're all sitting there going, based, and I'm like, I don't want to, especially if you tell me I have to. <laughs> I don't want to. What are you like? But, <laughs> and look at the, oh, dear. Yeah. The, don't look at the top, because that, oh, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Susie and I are going for our extra walk. The afternoon walk. Yeah. Okay. Enjoy because she hasn't had enough, and I haven't got enough steps. No, have we got any chocolate in the fridge? No, if we're really not, no. did you eat it all? No, she's lying to me. <laughs> I shan't buy you any tomorrow. Oh, you will, you will. <laughs> oh, I reckon I could have sewn the back of this. The, uh, yeah, I could have got the back done at the same time, but. With the way that this is going today, I didn't want to risk it. So let's have a new bobbin. I tend to just, because um, my machine will fill the bobbins 25, 50, 100 or a custom amount, I tend to just fill them up completely because I, I tend to end up going back to using the same thread. And now that I have a giant amount of bobbins because mum bought me this for Christmas a couple of a couple of years ago so I have all of these five there and then I think about another ten in the box so I have a lot of bobbins so I tend to end up just filling them up because I will eventually come back to use this colour of thread I think I mentioned I haven't really sewn anything this week because uh, like I said I, when I came back the same zipper foot um, and thread was on from last week's hangout um, but it, it has been really nice sewing with you guys again like I know I, I know I've been doing other stuff this week but it is just nice to be back at the sewing machine right so let's close up this back seam then we can hem it and put on uh, so so yeah put on the bias bias binding get it hemmed and then we can sew down the waistband of the lining and it'll be done which will be nice I might actually go over there and see if I can put it on and try it on but I have a feeling that it's not going to fit me that I'm still a little bit too soft and squidgy for it. Nicola says, "What? which, which um, sewing machine are you thinking of, Alex? And Sal says, congratulations to Alex. Una says to Alex, I went to the local showroom to choose an overlocker for my birthday. We wore masks. Um, Una says, it was appointment only, worth asking. Alison says, I'm off to a kutcher tomorrow. I um, probably said that very wrong which is on the border of Victoria, New South Wales, as tomorrow is a public holiday. So 99 peeps, have a great weekend. Love to Chiana. Thank you very much, Alex Anderson, and love to Binks and Maya as well. 
Deb says, I, can, I can't sew with any kind of sole on my feet, even if it's slippers, have to be sock type. I can drive in heels, but as I get older, I want to wear them, my want to wear them isn't as great. I want to wear all the heels. Thing is, if I wear heels, I'm usually about the same height as Wilson. I like feeling dinky next to him. So that is one of the good thing about the flats. Um, Alex says, I promised myself that if I do a certain number of videos, unbelievable for me, then I can buy whichever machine I want. Oh, that's exciting. Sal says, oh yeah, how was the barbecue last week, Sean? Oh, it was so good. It was so, so good. We had lamb chops and sausages and uh, chicken. Oh, it was lovely. And mum made homemade potato salad, which was very nice. Really bad for Weight Watchers, like all of the points, but it was really good. Alex says, I want to go to the show, showroom in Warsaw and I won't be able to fly just yet. I want to compare two industrial cover stitch machines. Ah. Duvalet says, I'm back. That was a very short chat. How is your sister? Alex says, but I will get mine from Franklin's Industrial with all the trimmings. Nice. Julie needs to go make dinner. Thank you for hanging out with us, Julie. It was lovely to see you. Right. Let's get this skirt vaccine sewn up. Oh, come on, thread. Oh, it's got stuck where I'm walking for. There we go, that's better. Right. Now, let's not catch the zip in this sewing, this line of sewing either, because, you know, that wouldn't be good. Now I need to go and press all of the work that I've just done and then we can start finishing which will be nice. I think I'm just gonna do a little bit more stitching at the top here because I have missed joining up the back seam by about a quarter of an inch which is not what I had intended. So let's just go back in and rectify that. Oh, everything that can go wrong is going wrong. Mind you, no, this is not going wrong. This is just a little temporary glitch. There we go. Otherwise, there would have been a small hole at the back of the dress. And we don't want that because that would be bad. Right, pressing. Rachel's off to work. Bye, Rachel. Thank you for hanging out with us. It was nice to see you. Okay, where do we get to? Siobhan says, I've got my, I've gotten rid of my he heels and now wear wedges. I like wedges. I have a few pairs of wedges. Eileen says, it's nice to have something to look forward to, Alex. Siobhan says, I'm making breakfast. 
Duvalet says, my sister is good. She was going out to buy flowers for her partner as today is Father's Day here in Lithuania. So happy Father's Day to your dad also. Thank you. Ours is in a couple of weeks. It's towards the end of June, I believe. Um, Alex says to Eileen that she knows and she's feeling very happy about the sewing machine. Lots of people saying goodbye to Rachel. And um, Alex says to Duvalet, happy Father's Day to all the dads in Lithuania. And if they wish to celebrate, this is very true. Happy birthday to the papas in Lithuania. Eileen says to Rachel, that's a late shift. Hope it's a good one. Right, ironing. First time today. Oh, Ooh. my legs do still work. That's good. I've got some lighter weight French terry uh, in a kind of olivey green colour. I'm thinking of making some of these because it's a, like I said, it's a lighter weight than these because these are quite heavy and I have definitely not been wanting to wear these when it's been hot. And um, but it was it's been a bit, been a bit cooler today, so I thought I'd put them on. Add some water in that as well. That fly is still in here from earlier. Right. Okay. This pressed open. Oh, there's some accidental, almost pattern matching happening on the back here. Oh, well, of course there is because um, I cut it in half, didn't I? So that I would wouldn't have a seam at the centre front. So a witch has lost her face. <laughs> so I can get her up onto the iron board. Just. Okay. Which shall I do first? Sew the waistband down or hem it? I think I'll sew the waistband down. I think that's the next thing to do. Because it's never the most fun. Okay. it pinned into place on the wrong side so that I can then flip it over and pin it into place on the right side. At least that's the plan. Where did we get to? Sal so says, as my birthday is a week before Christmas, I love Father's Day because it spreads the presents throughout the year. That is nice. Yeah, it's very nice to have a birthday kind of a fair amount of time away from um, Christmas because it is two, like, two nice celebrations. So I can understand enjoying Father's Day for that reason. When is Father's Day in, the, in, in Australia?
Where do we get to? Una says, when I was a kid, I'd get winter clothes for Christmas prezzies and summer clothes for birthdays. <laughs> well, I mean, it's efficient. Caroline says, my dad's birthday was the end of June, so always just after Father's Day. It's now a difficult time because I miss him so much. Oh, Caroline, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, Father's Day is the 21st of June in Australia as well. I think it's the same here in the UK. Oops, don't drop the pins inside the dress, that's bad. Sorry, it's proper concentra concentration face time again. Okay, I think that's all pinned flatly. So I'm now going to try and pin it so I can stitch in the ditch from this side. Where did we get to? Churn Dash says, this year's Father's Day falls on my youngest son's birthday. Aww. Noelia says, in Spain, Father's Day is on the 19th of March, so which is St. Joseph's Day, and Joseph was Jesus's father. Then Father's Day is on that day. Ah, okay. Duble says, my sister's birthday is on Christmas Eve, Eve, so it's always been celebrated on the Christmas Eve, but she always gets a separate gift for her birthday. Yeah, my granny's used to be Christmas Day, and we had a separate birthday. We had a separate birthday presents. We had a se separate cake. Um, it was birthday. It was Christmas birthday morning and Christmas Eve afternoon. concentration whilst pinning as well this time because I want to make sure I'm catching the um, waistband lining because otherwise this is pointless. I might just re-pin that. better. Okay. Still got aha going around in my head. Um Crafting Bev says, my birthday is January 1st and it seems like everybody forget about my birthday since they were all recovering on New Year's Eve. Oh, no. Sal says to Una, that would be flipped here in Australia as our Christmas is in the summer. Yes. Caroline says, I'm looking forward to the poof so long because he would have loved that. 
he always had one by his chair and with his newspapers and books. Oh, awesome. One of my sisters has her birthday on the 20th of December, so mum always gave her a party on the 20th of June. That's nice. Nimoy says, German Father's Day was a couple of weeks ago, so we just threw it in with Ascension Day. That's a holiday already anyway. Yeah, if you have um, if you have a birthday very close to a public celebration day, it's very hard. It is very hard, and I like that families um, do put together like a, a, a specific UU day at a different time in the year, like they did with Caroline, Caroline's sister. Is that right? Yes. Got to stop stabbing myself with pins. It's not. It's not fun. Oh, I need a different song on my head. <laughs> that one's a bit close. Una says, oh, "Of course, it would be." Um, summer clothes and if, if flipped for an Australian summer and winter because your guys are going into winter now aren't you Sal says my dad has two birthdays technically the one he was actually born on and the other one on his birth certificate that's two days after that <laughs> Wilson's promised me a second birthday this year because obviously we didn't get to spend my birthday together. I've realised though that the um, the retreat dates, the first one is Wilson's birthday weekend. So I won't see him for his birthday this year either, which I'm really gutted about, but it was the only dates that Lyle Coombe had available. So it was, it had to be those dates. But I am sad that I won't get to spend Wilson's birthday with him again. Last year I was at a conference. I mean, I, I woke up, we, we spent his birthday morning together, but it was a work day. But I was at a, at a conference for the evening of his birthday. So I took him out for dinner the night before. And he went out with some friends on his actual birthday. Um, but yeah, this year, I'm not even going to be there for the start of his birthday, which is sad. If anyone's interested, the retreat, there's a few spaces left on the retreat and the dates are going to be going live any minute now. I'm just waiting for the last person who was booked onto the May retreats to pick her weekend and then I can book in any new people if they'd like to come. I think there's about four spaces available, which is good. And I'm just hoping that everything it's not back to normal, but like travel is, is doable and allowable in October. Because there's quite a few people coming from far away, like Nimue, and coming from Canada and America as well. I think somewhere from it, someone's coming from Africa as well, I believe. So yeah, we've got quite a few people coming from outside the country. So I really hope it works. So yes. Nimoy says, earworm on offer. I'm stuck with the Friends music because of it not being the day or the week for Zips. By the way, have you guys seen the postmodern jukebox version of that? I haven't. I shall look that up. I can have that in my head now. That's good. Caroline says, this year I was house-sitting for my, for my Don in Reading on my birthday. Hubs came over and we bought a takeaway dinner. Early March, things were starting to get hairy. Yeah. Yes. Very much looking forward to when the government allows sleepovers again, because that's at the moment I could I could see he could come down here and visit, but he wouldn't be allowed to stay. So I'm looking forward to when um, the government are allowing you to have 
government sanctioned sleepover so you can come and stay he uh he's been speaking to his his work and they are um oh suddenly very itchy does excuse me oh no the tissues are moved tissues are here oh oh i hate hay fever well yeah, his work rang him the other day and they're like, we're trying to get you back earlier if we possibly can because they said he's going to be back in mid-July and he's like, oh, oh okay. <laughs> so I'm kind of hoping that the government relaxes the lockdown enough that he can come visit properly, legally, um, before he goes back to work, but I don't think it's going to happen because they're, they're, re, they're re-upping the level for, um, especially for the places that got inundated over the weekends the bank holiday weekends aren't they so i don't know we shall see it's going to be our one year anniversary next month i hope we get to see each other for that that would be nice been um slip stitching in the waistband on a lot of dresses recently but I've decided um this one was previously stitched in the ditch for the waistband and I've decided that I'm just going to do that again on these sort of like thicker cottons I don't mind I think it kind of blends in a bit more. I think on rayons and things, it is a little bit more noticeable when you stitch in the ditch. But again, it's just one of those things. It's like both options. You can do whichever you prefer. Just making sure that I'm not catching anything that I shouldn't be. Because again, ask me how I know. What's the chat? Where do we get to? Jubilee said, my grandma explained to me why our name days were more important than actual birthdays. And since my name day was on a Wednesday, I've got my usual congratulations from the grandparents and my birthday gifts are still with them. So now the name day gifts will be with, will be given at the same time. It's going to be a bonanza. Sal says, just to tease myself to come, what is the airport that I would have to fly in, f fly to from Australia to get to the retreat? At London, London would be the easiest one. Um, I think London would be pretty much your only option, actually. Um, we're about four hours door to door for the trains and ferries. You would definitely be coming from the furthest distance away if you did come, Sal. <laughs> Alex says to Duvalet, happy, happy belated name day. I hope you enjoyed it. Linnea says, how long does it take to travel to London from where you are? But yeah, about four hours. Door, and actually, I mean door to door. So the train itself is about an it's about hour and 45 minutes from London to Portsmouth. Then there's a 20 minute ferry. And then there's another sort of half hour train journey. And then there's a, about a 20 minute drive. But there's obviously all the connecting times that you've got in that as well. Usually it's pretty seamless. But I, I think it's about four hours door to door. Nimue says, I'm rethinking taking the train in October because planes look even worse for travelling health-wise. Would mean spending a night in London, I think, various options to ponder. Yes. Let me know if you need any help organising travel, Nimue. 
Eileen says, I'm also really looking forward to sleepovers. All my best friends and family live a bit of a distance away. Fingers crossed for the anniversary. Thank you, Eileen. And yes, it would be nice to be able to see our friends and family again. Julie says, oh, I'm making the food. Duvalet says, thank you, Alex. Had a fabulous time BBQing with friends. I haven't seen in a long time now. Yes, I hope you enjoyed your name day. Um, Michelle Coombs says, hi, Sean. Greetings from the Caribbean. I'm here sewing masks and getting pins stuck too. <laughs> <laughs> glad it's not just me but hello and welcome and I hope the pin stops sticking you Alex says I need to do some work so have fun everyone thank you for the lovely company thank you for hanging out with us Alex um Simone says okay couldn't chat because I was finishing the dress much concentration and now it's late and I'm off to bed it was lovely thank you Sean Simone thank you for coming Simone it was lovely to see you Duvalet says to bye to Alex Linnea says it would be a boat from our coast or Denmark coast to you yeah, if you didn't want to fly, that's quite so... Oh, okay, so you probably end up coming into Harwich or Newcastle or something like that. They're quite long journeys from from, from there. Um, but, I mean, if you, if you are, if you would like to know, if you'd like to have a look, I can get, definitely give you the, um, the details of, of which trains and stuff that you'd need to have a look at so you can work out if it would be something that you would actually want to do because it would be a long trip. Like Nimue says she's she's planning on um, having a look at trains coming over, which is a much longer day, but I would imagine much less scary than an aeroplane at the moment. the time to see if that has worked and has sewn down all of the lining pieces and I haven't missed anything. I think if I've missed anything, I'm going to hand tack it into place. Yep, that's all in, so that's good. Okay, getting close. And now to finish off the hem. I'm just gonna Okay. Sal so says, awesome, I could get a train to Newcastle. Oh wait, that's Newcastle here in Australia. Damn, so close. <laughs> Caroline says, son and daughter-in-law went to Ikea this week for bits for their garden, gave up partway through because of lack of social distan distancing, scared to scared to life out of, uh, out, out of, scared the life out of both of them, even with masks, etc. Yeah. Linnea says, typo, I mean, it should be. My dream would be a location first to London for fabric shopping and then hanging out, then hanging out, then your retreat. Yeah, that would be fun. Duvalet says, well, if you take the train to London, it would be quite a comfortable trip. Train trip to, from Brussels to London is two hours long, so it's manageable. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. I am very hopeful that it all can all go ahead. 
as which is why I've released the dates and booked everyone in. And we will play it by ear, obviously, with whatever the recommendations from the government are for everyone's safety. But I'm very much hopeful that we can go ahead in October because I want to see all you guys. Feels like it's been ages. So, right, let's get this binding finished. I'm going to actually get this finished today. I've jinxed it now. You, you, we all know that. <laughs> I'm hopefully going to get this finished today. Some little straggly threads that I need to cut off. my seam allowance stays open. Karen's here. Good morning, Karen. How are you? Susan says, from here, Newcastle and Pontine, you can fly down to Southampton. That is very true. But if you're trying to avoid flights, then it's quite a long train journey. But yeah, flights to Southampton happen. to be cutting these threads off as I go around on though. Just so worried that I'm being so clumsy today I'll cut a hole in it or something and again I've attempted fate massively. It'll be fine. Deb says to Susan I've been thinking of booking on but hold but holding on to see what's happening with work and pennies. But I was thinking probably easier to fly from Newcastle to Southampton. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, it depending on um, 
which one you wanted to come on. There is also people coming down from Yorkshire. So I, I know that's not exactly Newcastle, but there, there's also the possibility of perhaps carpooling and things as well. I, um, when everybody's booked on, I make Facebook groups for the weekends so that you guys can then all know who's coming if you're share if you've agreed to share a room who you're sharing a room with and then that way hopefully we can kind of try and organize um like joint travel as well if possible in as many places as possible Where did we get to? Lauren says to Linnea, I totally agree. Sal says, just looked, it would take me 25 hours to fly from Sydney to London. Wow. Yep. That is a long way. I'm not going to try it on with you guys still here because if it doesn't fit, I will cry. I'm kind of not expecting it to fit. I'd be surprised if it starts, if it does. But it'll be fine. I've got a... I've got the uh, brown leafy fabric for the other dress for next weekend's um, hangout. Because I, th I think I, I think I probably will do a hangout because I don't think I'm going to be going to the weekender. So I think I probably will schedule a hangout for, for the few of us that are not going to be going to that. Because we can come and hang out and have our own little sewing weekend, can't we? So... Um, right, I need to press this, but yeah, I think that's what I'll do next weekend is the the brown leafy dress. Although I think I might actually have enough fabric to recut the entire bodice, and I want to make a new muslin for the bodice because I want to use the by hand London Anna bodice for my parrot dress, but as I've mentioned it's a little tight at the moment so we'll see if this one fits and if this one doesn't I have cut out a lining fabric and I was planning on just sewing it with slightly larger seam but uh, smaller seam allowance and if that works that means I don't have to retrace and alter the bodice which would be quite nice because there was quite a lot of work that went into that but if I do have to it's not the end of the world
so we shall see. Get rid of all these stray threads. I think I've got them all. Oh no. One or two extras. Now I've got them all right. So now I'm gonna turn that round and um press it. Words, words are hard. Uh, let's see. Caroline says to Deb, I bet flying would be cheaper too. Train prices can be horrific. Yes. Stephanie says, I can't imagine being on a plane for 25 hours. Nope. Nimoy reminds me, this reminded me that I should put it in for time off just to be optimistically on the safe side. Yes, Nimoy, you should do. <laughs> Duvillet says, I think the easiest way would to, I think the easiest way would be to down. I love driving. So it seems the most logical thing, which allows me to bring the sewing machine. Also, I think that's what I do coming from Lithuania. Sal, it took me almost 40 hour, 48 hours to reach Sydney from Vilnius. It wasn't my longest journey. Oh, wow. What is your longest journey? I suppose from Vilnius, you had to fly to a hub, didn't you? And then you would have had to have changed planes. And then you would have had to have probably, it would probably have, have changed somewhere else along the way as well, I would think. It's my travel agent showing. But yeah, I don't think there's any, I wouldn't have thought there would be very many direct flights. But then, I mean, obviously I don't know. So yeah, let's know, Duvalet. Okay. Duvalet says, it was 56 hours from Vilnius to Barcelona. Yes, in Europe during the um, pilot strike in Frankfurt. Oh, wow. I'm probably saying the capital city wrong as well. Vilnius. Come on. Oh. Didn't do its usual click. Hello, Suze. What are you doing down there? Hi. Hello. What do you want? Come here. Susie. She's sniffing at something. Yeah, come on. What are you doing? There's a good girl. Oh. <laughs> Can't see a thing, can you? What are you sniffing at? Can you say hello to the peeps? Hello, peeps. You had a nice second walking? Yes? Okay. Oh, she's got a foot in my pocket. That's not going to end well. There you go. She can smell something down there. Mum's dropped something or something. She's like, there's food. I can find this food. I can smell it. And that was her head. She's, she's been walking into more and more things recently. Poor little monster. What are you doing? Oh, it's her ball. <laughs> It's a good job she's got such a good sense of smell. This fly is living dangerously. It's going to get steamed. Steamed fly.
I was thinking about some of the other dresses that I have in my wardrobe that don't really fit me anymore. And I was thinking, I was wondering if I could, um, if I'd sewn them with such large seam allowances and I was wondering if I could let them out and, you know, kind of, or if they weren't make new bodices for them, for some of them that I can get the fabric for or um, turn them, turn some of them into skirts because obviously you can make the waistline bigger on a circle skirt and some, most of them are gathered. And then I thought about all of the um, work that would be involved in that. And I was like, I just want to make new dresses. <laughs> Who knows? I might get, I might get to the point at some point in the future when I have a 24 inch waist again. I mean, it's unlikely, but you never know. So, right. I am going to sew this hem in by machine rather than uh, slip stitch it down. But I tend to do that with these um, these skirts anyway. These skirts that have uh, straight hems. I don't mind how it looks. You could, of course, use your blind hem foot for the correct in the correct manner and actually do a blind hem. But I'm just going to do a straight stitch. What are you after, Suze? What are you after? Hey? Well, I can hear his little pitter patter of feet. Ruth Ann says that's a lot of unpicking, not my favourite task. Yeah. I think that's why it's not going to happen. Oh, I'm saying Vilna's right. Yay! <laughs> Julie says, I think my last, longest was a business journey from Denmark to Provence in the south of France. Nimue says, I thought about driving as well, but I'm kind of terrified of using the wrong side of the street. Yeah. When we go to Croatia next year, I, I will be allowed to drive because I'll have been driving for long enough. And I'm kind of wanting to do it and also are terrified of doing it at the same time. Sal says, if I had the money, I would come. I would just write and read and sleep on the plane. <laughs> Duvalet says, and yes, for every longer journey, we have to switch planes in Warsaw, Frankfurt, Paris, Copenhagen, London, or Moscow. So all our trips are always two to three hours longer than usual. Ruth and Sal says, but at the same time, I wouldn't want to make you ladies feel uncomfortable with me being the only man there. Oh, Sal, you wouldn't be. There is a lot of guys coming. Don't worry. Lots of other halves are being dragged along this time. Actually, we've got lots of guys coming this time. It's going to be fun. She says, says, after me made May, I had a pile of clothes that needed really tiny alterations that I'd ignored for years, sat down and fixed them yesterday, and not one took longer than 20 minutes. That's nice. I think that's what I, I'm pleased about getting these done and out of that bag, because they've just been sat there for ages, and most of them were quite quick, because we did a few of them together, but then there's been this one and then the brown leafy dress that's going to be a bit longer of an of a endeavour. So... Louise says, I don't know if you like them, but you could always make a corset. Yeah. I am really tempted to do that. Really tempted. Because I also want to start making some of the Gertie dresses, like the Lamour and the Liz and things like that. And they would be better with a strapless bra. And I don't like strapless bras, but I do like corsets. So, yes, I am. I am thinking about that. That might be one of the slightly longer and more involved patterns that I attempt. Because I did say to you guys that I was thinking about doing some kind of like longer projects that would take me, you know, like probably a couple of weeks, if not a whole month, just to get one thing done. And you guys seem to be really up for that. It's going to make the vlogs interesting because... Um, I was having a conversation with somebody and she very wisely pointed out that I ought maybe not to like announce something so that people then get impatient and then it feels like there's pressure and a deadline and just to like show you guys the progress videos as they go along but then the daily waffles what would I do with those so it's kind of like a yeah
but I feel like I'm catching up with the sew alongs that I have been promising that I will do because I'm down to I think I'm down to three that I haven't filmed for yet as opposed to like the eight or nine I had outstanding so it's kind of feeling like I can start maybe thinking about a larger project because I have like fulfilled all the commitments that I said I was going to do so yeah it's feeling it's feeling like I could possibly look at one of the longer projects that I want to do This is another reason that I want to get a proper edge stitch foot because this is a blind hem foot so I've got all the fabric under the throat space of my machine and the throat space on my machine is 12 inches wide so that works but um, most machines don't have that much throat space and when I'm like yes so you're a bit you're uh, so your body is binding down with your invisible oh uh, you're a, a blind hem foot yeah, it's totally fine and it's just like how are you supposed to squish all the dress through the small space There we go. Dubelo says to Nimue, follow this, follow, just follow someone and don't be the first one at traffic lights. And she says the same advice for me as well for driving abroad. Yeah. Una says, please do a sew along for a corset. I'd love a long line under non underwired bra too. I there are lots of sew alongs for corsets already out there. I, I I would eventually maybe get to the point where I'd feel comfortable doing that, but I don't I've never sewn a corset in my life. So I don't know how good I would be at making them. I would want to do a lot of practice before I did a sew along. I have a feeling that I would need to make a lot of alterations to get the fit that I wanted as well. And I don't necessarily want to kind of like tight lace my waist particularly small or anything. Um, but I would want it to kind of have a little bit of reduction at the waist. And as you know, I'm quite a definite hourglass shape. So yeah, it would be interesting. But yes, no, I, I, I possibly in the future, Dress is finished. Yay. 
It is finished. So if I can actually get it on, it's definitely much more wearable now than the 17 inch skirt that was on it before. So uh, yeah, that's good. That's good. Caroline says she wants to try the Angela Clayton Edwardian style one. That would help her back, she thinks. Yeah. Dublé says, I legitimately got this advice from my driving instructor 14 years ago and I've used it multiple times and it works. This is very true. Julie has a sew along for a corset. There you go. And she says, working all, all the alterations out, etc., would make for a really interesting daily waffles. Yeah, Duv um, Nimoy says to Duvalet, a friend came back from nine months in Britain and ended up on the wrong side here having to take a left turn. Luckily, nobody was coming at that moment. Yeah, when we when we came back from two weeks in Lanzarote, dad was driving home and he turned right onto the road and went onto the right-hand side and there was a bus coming. It was, thankfully, it was far enough away, but it was, it was just like, okay. Una says, yeah, me too. I'm not sure I want to course it as such, just more of a supportive bustier with cups so my girlies don't just head south like with the strapless bras yeah and I think that's the point isn't it because the corset gives you support from here as well doesn't it so yes right yay so we're at four hours we're four hours what should we do now what should we do now shall I go and try this on do you want to hear cursing if it if it doesn't fit Shall I? I think I shall. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves, but remember I'm still here and I can see you. <laughs> okay. If you hear cursing, then it really didn't fit. I'm kind of not expecting it to, to be honest. Because my waist, as I say, is a bit, is a little bit poofier than usual at the moment. <laughs> You know, if I break the zip when I put this thing on, there will be more cursing because of that as well. Okay, okay. Oh my god! Okay, hang on, hang on. It's one of the joys of the this dress is that zipping it up is always a pain in the proverbial. Is the suspense killing you? Okay, two secs, I'll be back. I needed some help getting the top of the zip up. I'm so pleased. Look, it does up. <laughs> oh, I've left my boots. I've left my fluffy boots over here. There's just now, there's like a pile of clothing I've just discarded. My feet are getting cold. Mum's making rock cakes as well, which is ever so exciting. So, sexy, sexy boots. <laughs> Yay! Where did we get to with the chat? I mean, it's... um. It's snug. It's really, really snug. I will say that. But this means that um, 
oh, some of my other Anna dresses might fit, but then it means I'd have to unpick the zips. <laughs> I'm not sure I would do that. <laughs> so, HSO says, just try it on. Um, Duvalet says, never worry, I imagine that might happen. That's why following someone helps. Karen says, please try on judgment free zone here. Yeah, if it didn't, it didn't fit, that would have been hilarious. Um, Nicole says, if you break that zip, I will curse for you. <laughs> Julie says, can't look it here, but if you find it on my channel about a year ago. Um, Julie saying, does it fit? <laughs> Duvalet says, I can hear the zipper working. Well done, you finished it. The zip went up at least part way. <laughs> Quick, someone read the mannequin. It's finished. It's all good. We'll be twiddling our thumbs until next weekend. <laughs> Yay. Looks awesome. Woot. You look beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cecilia says, all your hard work has paid off. Yeah, you look so nice in it. Eileen says it looks great. So we know what you're wearing next Sunday, quite possibly, actually. It's making me sit up straight as well, because, yes. So, um, yes, little kitty girl on the front there, and then little devil with her head cut off. <laughs> yeah, I like the way the lady popping out of the waistband as well. <laughs> um, where do we get to? Um, H says, uh, uh, yeah, you look exquisite, Sean. Thank you, Sal. Michelle says, wow, that's beautiful. It's like you've painted it on. Love it. Yes, it is a little bit like I painted it on. It is, it is very snug. It's not uncomfortably snug. I wouldn't want to eat a large meal. And there is, there is a little bit of give in there, a little bit. But, um, yeah. But, oh, yes. No, the, um, the skirt's so much better length as well. Not that you can see it with me standing there it's such a better length for me because the other one came to here so it was just all just all the bit that I don't like right on show so I'm so pleased now I'm questioning why I didn't put pockets in the side seams <laughs> because that would have been way more work and I didn't want to do all that work oh I'm so tempted to go and look at my other naked lady dresses because I haven't worn those in ages if I've sewn them all with such a giant seam allowance. Oh. Oh, what do I do? Oh. <laughs> I know there's some dresses in my wardrobe that won't fit at the moment because um, I know there isn't giant seam allowances in there. I know some of them just won't fit. But if I can rescue some of them. But then saying that I'm trying to lose weight, so... Oh, I don't know. I don't know. But I am very happy with this one. So that's good. So, yay. <laughs> it was worth it. Right. What should we do now? What shall we do now? Duvalet says, well, that would be 23 new dresses to wear. Yeah, but Duvalet, that's also 23 dresses that need all that work. Hmm, no. <laughs> Nicola says, oh yes, naked ladies next weekend. <laughs> I do like my naked lady dresses. Wilson's not seen any of my naked lady dresses in real life. So he's not he's not actually had to go out with me in public dressed like this. I wonder, I wonder what he's going to think. Oh, these are gonna look amazing with those new shoes. This is gonna look so cool with those new shoes. Oh, exciting. Right. Let's, um, at the very least, let's give this machine a little bit of TLC because it hasn't had any love for a week. So let's do that at the very least. I mean, change the needle, give it a bit of oil, a bit of a clean. Oh, yeah, I had to go and get mum to do the back of the zip, the top, the, the like the last sort of five inches of the zip up because I could, I just couldn't reach. And like my other ones are slightly roomier, so I can like maneuver myself in them to get round to like, but well, they weren't when they were slightly roomier. But this one was definitely not having it.
Julie just says waffle. Uh, Dagmar says, love the length. This dress looks amazing on you. You can see why I have so many of this bodice, can't you? Because I just, I just love it. And it really does, at least in, in my mind, it really does show off a large print well. So that's what I'm thinking with the parrots is that I've, obviously the cockatoo, I'd have, I'd have a little bit of grey up here and then the cockatoo crest starting around here. So I think his feet are going to hit about there. Maybe, maybe might be a little bit lower. We'll see. But I, I think this is going to be a good kind of space to show off the cockatoo for that print that I want to use. That's why I kind of went for this. I was thinking of doing the anabodice because it does show off large prints well, I think. And I have got um, darts in the inside here, and it's got then it's got the the waist. The open-ended darts at the waist as well, all the waist pleats. Mum hasn't made rock cakes for ages because we didn't have any mixed fruit and we couldn't find mixed fruit anywhere. And I've ordered her a two kilogram bag from Amazon. It was 20 pounds, including the postage, but I thought, you know what? that kind of works out weight for weight for the smaller bags that you get. And it will mean rock cakes again, because we haven't had those for a while. So I'm excited. There we go, that's better. Right, so let's put this on. I've ordered a book. Um, somebody mentioned it on one of the sewing groups that I'm on. It's called Iconic Dresses. And it's got, it's meant to have patterns for Marilyn Monroe's seven year itch dress and Julia Roberts polo dress and Kira Knightley's atonement dress. Uh, there's 10 really iconic dresses in it. Um, so it's on its way. I will let you guys know what I think when it arrives. Um, but that might be a good candidate for a larger project. Because it's going to be like a fancy grand evening thing or a coat, but it's really the wrong time of year to be making a coat, isn't it? as much as I want to be making things. Okay. I've decided I'm going to make my 8577s in batches because I can use white thread for both of them. So I'm going to sew all the elements together at the same time kind of thing. So sew all the bodice together for both of them. That is a fluffy thread. Let's try that again. There we go, that's better. Bobbin thread. That's better. There we go. Right, ready for the eight five seven sevens. Mary Manning says beautiful, and it fits. Yay! Thank you, Mary. Dublé says Camilla Cami might be the next project. Or as Julie said, waffle. I've just set up white thread, but the Camilla Cami would have been a great idea. But I need black thread for that. Never mind. <laughs> Julie says, time for dinner in the Jacobi Jack o Jacobson house. Oh, I can speak today. Enjoy your dinner. Noelia says, every time I make a dress with a back zip, I wonder why I didn't put 
it on the side instead. Actually, uh, I think it was Lynn suggested putting the side zip into this for the parrot dress. And I think I might do that. I think that might be a good idea. Lisa Comfort and Ali Selex did an Instagram live recently and Ali Selex said her Anna dress was her bestseller. I can see why. Nimoy says, shopping is odd at the moment. Friday, I found a dry yeast for the first time since mid-March. The things you get excited about these days. Yes, yes, definitely. Okay. I need a bathroom break, so I'll be back in a second. Don't move the mannequin. Right, if you do move the mannequin, take that, take that bodice away and make it fit me, please. That'd be nice. I'm back. Stop talking about me. Oh dear. Um, let's look at these. Here we go. Majority of my costume pa patterns are Angela Clayton patterns. So mm, this is a cut corset, so maybe I don't want to make this one. But I bought this because it is a it does have this the full bust adjustments done for you. If I did make a corset out of this, it would be view C, which is what she's wearing, I think. Yes, what she's wearing. Um, I actually bought this for the, the, the hoop skirt as well because I want to make a butterfly dress and I want to have the ability to wear it over a hoop skirt or without the hoop skirt because I think it would be really dramatic over a hoop skirt but I also think that would limit its functionality as it were if it was just to be worn over a hoop skirt but I would like, I would like that option um, see if I can find a photo of it the sort of thing that I mean. I'm sure you guys know exactly what I mean, but. I've got the fabric for this. No, I need to take it out. That word. Yeah, here we go. I have the fabric for this, but the the fabric I have is for a blue morpho butterfly. But yeah, I want to be able to put it over a, uh, over a hoop skirt or have it without the hoop skirt because I think that would look really cool. Are you happy with your dress yes. after all that? It's yes. lovely. It was really funny. I was over there and they're, they're commenting. They're like, we can hear a zip. We can hear a zip. <laughs> it works. Yes. Yes. It looks really nice. Yes. After all that, yes. well done. I'm just now thinking about all my other ones and like how much of a single out of staying food on those. And if I let them out, would they fit now? Wow. Uh, 
Yeah, and then you know what would happen? I'd lose all the bloody weight. Yeah, I'd yeah. take them all the things back in again. Yeah. Are you going to have a cup of tea in a minute? Yes, please. With a I was going to say, is there going to be a rock cake? I hope so. Yeah. All being well. Noelia was just saying, uh, no, um, Nimue was just saying she found dry yeast the other day. It's weird the things that we're getting excited about. I said that you've got dried fruit. And she's like, I found dry yeast the other day. <laughs> <laughs> So where where did we get to? Where did we get to? Uh, Nicola says, grab all the nice things whilst I get the new shoes. <laughs> that's another reason I don't do my um, live streams down uh, up at mine because uh, that's where all the fabric and shoes are. <laughs> Michelle says, where are we at? It fits, Michelle. It fits. It's snug, but it fits. <laughs> Sal says, wow, the butterfly dress is incredible. And Louise says, love your dress and the butterfly dress is stunning. Yeah. So that's that's the big project that I was thinking about working on because it would mean that I would need to make a corset, which would mean that I could possibly have the waist shape that I wanted. Um, and like I say, they've already done the cup sizes on the corset for me and I like the look of that corset. The other two are just not something that you could wear in public without stuff underneath it at all. Um, but yeah, the hoop skirt as well. It would be the shorter hoop skirt that I would make, I think. It even has the pattern for the crown in this. So that's what I was thinking of as a um, base for the butterfly dress because I, the, the fabric I've got has got the large wings and then it also has smaller wings as well so I'd want to have like a smaller wing kind of come up on the on the bodice kind of thing and if need be the designer was lovely because the the background color of the of the wings to begin with was a different color and she put it on a gray it's for me and it's on the cotton sateen from Spoonflower so if need be I could go back and have some of the still get some more of the larger wings because I don't think I can have too many of those for the skirt layer um, but I could get her to put some smaller wings on it as well so that I could really have like a, a pair of wings across the, the, boss, the bust of the bodice. I think the other thing that's terrifying me about that is the fact that it would have to be kind of like a made up pattern that I did myself and that scares the crap out of me because I've never done that before. And I think that's one of the reasons that I've kind of been putting it off is because I don't want to mess it up <laughs> uh, but if I don't try then I'll never know will I so you know it's kind of like that catch 22 and how amazing would that be for the dressmakers ball next year is like a butterfly gown I would definitely go in for the catwalk because I haven't I haven't entered the dressmaking competition for the last two years that I've been I made my sister-in-law enter in her wedding dress <laughs> but I haven't I didn't enter myself so um yeah <laughs> Yeah. Um, Christine says you look fantastic. Thank you, Christine. And Crafting Bev says the dress looks really great on you. So glad it fits. Thank you. Thank you. It was definitely worth because when, like I said, the first time I put it in, there was an inch seam allowance on the back. So it definitely wouldn't have fit then. So it was definitely worth kind of taking the zip out and having to put the zip in five times <laughs> to get it to fit. I can't believe I had to put it in five times. <laughs> Duvalet says, is there no pattern out there for the butterfly gown? No. No. It's because it's, I would imagine it's because it's kind of really free form. I know in my head how I want to do it. So like I say, I have the large wings and I would cut those out with a seam allowance and I would sew them to plain fabric and then turn them through and press them down. And if need be, top stitch around the edge of the wings to get the wings done. For the skirt and that way they're all the raw edges are finished and then they just need to be attached to a waistband in a strategic way so that there was everything was covered and then for the corset I think it would need to be because I think the skirt's going to be quite heavy so I think it would need to be a separate corset that goes over the top rather than an actual dress although I'm not 100% sure on that yet and how does this does this lace up at the back? Yeah, this is laced at the back. So that would need to be like an under 
undergarment with then a, a top put over it. Um, I think. I don't know. I don't. I, I actually don't mind the look of lacing on an outer garment. I don't think it looks bad. So possibly could have lacing visible at the back. Um. Yeah. Michelle says you have to try before you ever fail. Exactly, exactly. And at the end of the day, it was expensive fabric because it was printed on spoon. It's, it's printed by Spoonflower, but it's not fabric I can never get again. So if it does mess up, I can get more. Louise says I was watching a YouTube channel earlier for a corset or stays. We need to use more stable boning than plastic for structure. Yeah, definitely. Um, Gertie recommends the spiral steel boning in her patterns. And the spiral steel boning was what was in my Playboy corsets. And they were, when they when they fit, they were actually very comfortable. Um, there were times where the caps of the the caps of the steel bone came off and I did get scratched, you know, and ended up with like actual hazard tape in my in my cleavage to try and prevent the, the bones from sticking into me. But the spiral steel boning, because it's when it warms up, it's malleable to your body. It is obviously more expensive. Um, they have synthetic baleen now, which is plastic boning. And the synthetic baleen, depending on the width that you get, it's also got more structure in it than some others. But mm. Papa's back. He went for a visit. Um, so, yeah, Dubelay says it sounds intricate, uh, the same as Angela Clayton's peacock gown. Her peacock gown is amazing, isn't it? I mean, this this butterfly gown isn't as much work. Um, I wonder if I've got a picture of the the wings. Still got Ruby Shoe up as a as a, a um. Morpho. Yeah, here we go. They're, they're the wings that I've got because they're meant to be used to make a cape. Hang on. Yeah, they're meant to the they're, they're meant to be used to make like a cape like that. But I want them for a skirt, so. Yeah, here we go. This is that's exactly what I've got. So as you can see, I've got the smaller ones and then the large ones. Um, I think I've got I think I've got three large butterflies, which would give me six panels for the skirt, which I think is only just going to be enough. Um, but then you don't want the waist of the skirt to be too bulky either. So I'm thinking like there would be an underskirt under there to then kind of make it lie nicely on the hoop and I'm, I'm thinking this would be kind of it wouldn't be this long and it wouldn't be as short as the shorter hoop it would kind of come to about there so yeah that's that's kind of what I'm thinking and I would like to I would like to um, give that a go because I've had the fabric for ages you could definitely have some fun with um, like sewing on beads and embellishments to the skirt pieces as well. So, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. This is not for the same thing, but that's another spoon flower fabric that's quite interesting. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, hmm. Louise says the wings are gorgeous and Duvalet says it will look gorgeous. Yeah, I just need to pluck up the courage to actually do it. Man up wet pants or woman up wet pants. No. Yeah. Yeah. I may, I'm, like I said, the main reason I bought this one was for the hoop skirt pattern. I may look for a different corset because as, a, as this we've mentioned, this one's cupped. It might be worth trying because I do like cupped corsets. Um, oh, I don't know. I don't know. 
I don't know. I don't know. Ah, ouch. Don't know. Don't know. I'm so pleased this fits. <laughs> so pleased this fits. Right, you guys. There's 141 of us. You guys need to start, start asking me some questions and stuff because otherwise we're just going to sit here with me just kind of like pondering, pondering the world. Suze, hello, come here. What's this? What's this? Come on. She's just staring at me. Come here. Come on. Come here. Oh. Come on, puppy. You're getting blind. Do you want to come on? <laughs> She's throwing herself on the floor. Oh, there we go. Is that nice? <laughs> uh, so Lauren says, what are you planning to make next? Um, I have all of my 8577s cut out down here. Well, two. I have two 8577s cut out down here. So I think that's what I'm going to do this week is get those both sewn up. And I think it is going to probably take me about four or five days to do that. So, uh, yeah, that's what I'm working on next. And then I'm going to be cutting out the brown leafy fabric for next weekend's hangout. Oh, you've got thread on you. don't want thread on me, do you? Um for next weekend's hangout so I can lengthen the skirt of that dress. Um, Joe says, did I miss the few FAQ you were going to do? I have filmed it. So it's going up probably tomorrow, actually. I've still got to edit this. Oh, hello. Oh, yes, I love you too. I do. Yes, I do. Um, I've probably got to edit it. I've got to edit that tonight, tonight, otherwise there won't be a video for tomorrow. <laughs> Eileen says, Susie is adorable. Joe says, oh, that Hi. dog. <laughs> yeah. I think she's a little bit spoiled. A little bit spoiled. Jubilee says, Bernadette has a corset tailor from Germany in one of her videos. I don't remember her name and she has corset classes and patterns. Just a thought I have subscribed to her and that is definitely a possibility. Yes. You're not, you don't want to lean back anymore. You're going to sit there like that? Is that comfortable? Okay. Yes, no, I, I saw that and um, I have subscribed to her and I have had checked out her her website. I've also joined the Corset Makers um, Facebook group as well. And there's some really good resources in that. So, yes. Louise says, what dress do you love the most that you've made? Hmm. I think my savannah print 8577 i'm always just so happy when i put that on that's another reason i cut these two out and i probably will make more 8577s because i just enjoy wearing it so much and it's it is big and it is full of fabric it's 10 meters of fabric it's a giant dress and so it's an expensive dress and it's a time consuming dress to make but i just enjoy wearing it so so much and it is quite a statement dress as well um, but I, th I think like I was wearing my linen viscose mix one that I made in October and I took it to I'd made it before October I made it September but I took it to the conference that I was going on and I showed you guys in the vlogs over there like over those couple of days like, the, all the different ways that I was wearing it so I do think they can be quite versatile as well although they're very statement they do work for a lot of different things so You having the worst day ever? Two walks, yummy breakfast, screechings. Oh my goodness, how many rock cakes? One, two, two. No, you bought me two, I'm gonna eat the two. Are you? I shouldn't. It's up to you. I'll find out how tight this dress can really get. <laughs> <laughs> you got my baby girl. But she walked in and kind of like looked at me. I think she's enjoying herself. I think she is. Yeah. I think she is. Oh, um, Sal says, with the Cthulhu top that I want to make, that I shared on the Peeps group and the Sew Over It group, what do you think would be good material to make, make him out of? 
Yeah, the panels, the panels that you showed, I think are silk, aren't they? And you showed a sew over it t-shirt pattern. And the sew over it t-shirt pattern, you might want to just double check that you can use it. Uh, is are your silk panels? Do they have any stretch in them? Um, because you just you want to make sure that it's 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 going to fit. Hello, hello. Um, Laurie says rock cakes. Yes, please. Oh, oh, Lorianne, Lorianne. Guess who's coming to Croatia with us next year? So exciting. So exciting. Um, yeah, so <laughs> she says, who? Rachel, Rachel and Martin. <laughs> I've outed them now, they can't come, they can't get out of it. <laughs> Caroline says, "May I have some Lady McElroy Meadow Mel Melody coming from Sherwoods for an 8577. I had a nightmare ordering from them and their IT are trying to sort my account out. Yeah, I, uh, they, they messaged me the other day and they said, I'm really sorry you're having problems with your account and um, we'll try and sort it out for you. And it's like, oh, you've already sorted mine out. So um, yeah, Lorraine says, really, that's beyond exciting. I know, right? It's going to be so good next year. I'm really looking forward to it. It will be worth the wait. It will be worth the wait. Yeah, she said yes, so she's not getting out of it now. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Nicola says, so what's the worst pattern you've ever made as in terms of badly made patterns, not because you made a mess of it? Ooh, good question. Um, I think it was that Lakala pattern, you know. My dress fits. What dress? Oh, the one that was way too short before. Way too short and way too small. When your dad wouldn't let you go out in public. No, you let me go out because I had the buyer over the top. <laughs> um, Giorgio's place is great for a photo shoot. Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Mum asked him and I was like, you can't just ask somebody if I can use their garden. <laughs> Uh, Nicola, sorry, patterns. Um, yeah, I think it's that Lakala pattern that we had the twisted neckline um, because they they are meant to be drafted for your size and the armhole was tiny, so that were, that didn't fit. And then just the, the way that they drafted the twist at the front was not what the picture looked like. Um, I've had a few Lakalas that have not lived up to, like I tried one with the kind of like shelf bust 50 style dress. And whilst the actual patterning of it was very clever, there was no shaping in it. So it was just a flat piece of fabric on the bust, which just didn't work. Um, but yeah, that Lakala pattern, that bodice, that just frustrated me. I mean, the, in the instructions were terrible as well, but I knew that going in. Um, but the, yeah, the uh, the actual way that it went together and it didn't look like the picture. So yeah, Lakala. Having said that, I have made a lot of Lakala patterns that are amazing and that I really, really enjoyed. So it's not it's not that all Lakala patterns are bad. It's just that I've had a few fails with some Lakala patterns. Sal says, I don't know if it has stretch. Bought it off eBay and didn't have the type that type of detail. We'll have to see when it arrives. Yeah, you need to make sure that it will stretch for the t-shirt pattern. <laughs> Lorianne's jumping up and down. <laughs> we, um, Rachel's, Rachel's already thinking about going to the fabric shop in Croatia. She's like, oh, oh yes, oh yes. We'll have to do some fabric shopping. Um, Lauren says, have you ever sewn anything with active swimsuit like fabric? I have sewn swimsuits with scuba and swimwear lining. Um, I haven't sewn any active wear as yet. I have lots of patterns for it. Does that not make me fit? It's like having, I have a gym membership in my, in my purse. Does that not make me fit? <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I have made swimwear just from scuba. 
So I don't know if that counts. Oh, that does count. She says that counts. Thank you, Aunt. <laughs> and I wore it. I've worn it two years in a row and it hasn't fallen to pieces. So, yes. And I did, before I went on holiday, I did actually have a shower with all of my new bikinis on just to make sure that they didn't go see-through because I was worried. Some of them were white. <laughs> I was like, oh, God. But, yeah, no, they, I've worn them two years in a row, so they've, um, they've held up well. I plan on making plan on making more swimwear because I have loads of cups of scuba somebody once I, I was I was going for 10 days and I made eight swimsuits and somebody's like how many swimsuits do you need and it was like well all of them <laughs> don't ask silly questions Nicola says and other than the one you were wearing most frustrating due to being poor fit and poor fabric choice oh so many with poor fabric choice um I think one of the most frustrating ones I made was a Butterick dress. Um, it was a knit dress and I'd specifically bought, I'm gonna have to move Susie for this. Oh, baby girl. You go see mum. There you go. Yeah. She's just looking at me, she's like, why, why am I on the floor? <laughs> um, let's see, here we go. So the 6388, I made BD, so the one that she's wearing, and oh my goodness, it looked awful on me. Those hip pockets just made my hips look even bigger. There wasn't enough shaping at the waist at all, so it just looked, it looked horrendous on me. I ended up cropping it and making it into a jumper, but I had to, to get rid of the pockets, I had to crop it really high and then put a really deep waistband on. So it was something that I just ended up getting rid of. I think I did use too heavy a weight fabric for it, but it just was not, it did not look like that. It does not, I did not look like her basically. But the annoying thing about that is I had spent a lot of money buying the Atelier Brunette sweatshirt, the sparkle sweatshirt in black with the gold dots on it. And I bought exactly the right amount to make this one 1.8 meters. So I have that floating around in my um, knit stash, which is just down there. And yeah, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work. So I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this top again, but I will make it into a top because, and I'm, I, I'll make it into a top that's cropped at the waist. So I need to take out, I need to do a little bit of work for that. But I really like this because of the neckline. The neckline on this is really fun. And it has like a yoke at the back, which I've got my hand right over. It has a yoke at the back, which is really, really nice. But I just, oh, just, oh, no, I put it on and it was awful. I think it was one of the ones that I didn't even make it to the vlog. Like the finished garment is in... I think it's March 2018 or March 2017's giant lookbook. Are you still here? You want to come back up? You just oh, you gotta look at me. You gotta see mum. Okay. Dog's just looking at me. Um, yeah, it was in March. I think it's March, but it's in that it's in that lookbook, and it just it was it's too too short and it's not good, and it it went it went. But I didn't even show you guys the actual dress because that was terrible. That was absolutely terrible. Um, H. So says I fell out with the grain grain line archer when I realised that they'd graded the wrist to have as much of a size increase as the waist. <laughs> okay, that's not what you want. <laughs> poor Wilson's not having the best of days um, let's see where did I get to Noelia says Lorianne Sean and Rachel fabric shopping please film it for the rest of us oh I will don't worry don't worry the actual internet in the in the villa in Croatia was amazing like the first time I went I pre-planned the mini series the mini tutorial series so that there was a video going up every day because I was just like, oh, the, the, the internet's going to be terrible. And we got there and it was absolutely brilliant. So I took my, um, I did take my uh, laptop last time and I did a live stream and I, I filmed videos out there and uh, yeah, it was great. So I will definitely be filming because we did film in the fabric shop last time. 
there was a cat. There was lots of the, the cat getting filmed. So, yeah. Um, Lauren says, sewing it out of scuba seems so smart. Not sure why I didn't think of that. Um, I, the, the only reason I tried it, Lauren, was because I had so many scuba scraps left over from all my scuba dresses that were too small for anything like a top or anything like that, but like too big to throw away. And they were perfect size for um, for swimwear, for bikinis. I made bikinis out of them, quite tiny bikinis as well. Um, but yes, Lorianne says, yes, Noelia, we'll be putting our fabric in our husband's suitcases, Sean in her dad's suitcase, yeah. Yep. <laughs> we need to remember that we need to leave space for, for, for fabric to return with us. Um, Princess Wade says, I have that pattern. Julie says, got six out of five stars from my daughter and 25 thumbs up from my boy for dinner tonight. Nice. And Duvalet and Sal were asking, what did you cook? Lisa says, my iPad died, but I'm back and the, and the dress is beautiful. Thank you, Lisa. And welcome back. Let me put this one away so I don't have to keep looking at it. So I bought, um, I bought a couple of other knit dresses that I'm hoping I can use for the Atelier Burnett fabric. Uh, that one I really like. Again, I would probably not put in the pockets. Like the line drawing looks a lot more curvy than the drawings on, on her, but that that I like. Um, this one I think might just be just too skin tight for the fabric. And then I love that one. I wouldn't put the wide band on the bottom for A and B. I would make C, the one that she's wearing. C would be my choice, definitely. How much fabric do I need for C? C, 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 C. 150 wide. I might get away with it, you know. I might be able to do that out of that Atelier Brunette fabric because that would be lovely. So, this dress is definitely make, making me sit up straighter, that's for sure. Uh, uh, Noelle is laughing at uh, Lorianne. Julie says, I cooked pasta with meat sauce. Nums, yum. Lauren says, do you ever draft any of your own patterns to make for yourself? Um, it, technically, yes, with the circle skirts. Uh, I have had, I've designed patterns that somebody else has drafted for me and with the idea that maybe we're releasing them at one day in the future, but I very much doubt that's going to happen because that's incredibly expensive under undertaking. Um, it's something I really want to do. I've got all of the sloper drafting classes from Susie Farah on Craftsy Blueprint which hopefully are ones that I'm going to be able to download because they're the, they're the ones that I'm most worried about that I, I really want to keep because eventually I would like to do that. Um, I've actually drafted a sloper. I drew, drew it all down. It was then just had to cut it out and make it up and I never got around to that part of it. And now obviously my shape has changed massively since then. So um, technically, yes, but no, I haven't really, no. Susan says, sorry, I've been talking to my sister for the last hour. That's okay. How is she? Dress fits, if you didn't see. Um, Stephanie says, I just cut out that pattern this morning, the one you just looked at the fabric for. Oh, let us know how you get on with that one. It looks really nice. I like it a lot. I can imagine that if it, if it does work for me, there's going to be a few of those made up as well. Duvalet says, so when are you going to Croatia? We are going in September of 2021 now. We were going September this year, but obviously with everything that's going on, um, we have postponed, which is sad, but also sensible. Sal says, love um, spag bog. Next time, send me some. Yeah, I made I made a giant fat of it this week, and I've actually put, ended up putting some in the freezer because I've made so much. Otherwise, I would have been eating spaghetti bolognese for like 10 days in a straight. 
Mm. Oh, my tea's getting to the point where I can actually drink it now. Mm. I'm really tempted to go and look at the seam allowance on all of my Anna dresses. Yeah, actually that might, well, no, there's still lots of dresses in there that I can't fit into and that even if I altered, I wouldn't be able to fit into them. Mm. We shall see. Noelia says, my local high school do a pattern drafting course as adults evening classes. I'd love to do it someday. Oh, that sounds really cool. Which high school is that, by the way, Noelia? Because you, I think you live fairly close to where I used to live. Which one is it? Which one is it? Susan says, sister and family, fine. She's now working from home and just getting used to it. Oh, must be a, a, a bit of a shock to the system. Mm, this tea is good. I'm going to send Wilson a picture of my dress. <laughs> Oh, it's Farlingay and Woodbridge. Oh, okay, yeah. 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 Louise says, go do it, Sean. One at a time. You could do a fashion show if they fit. <laughs> mm. See, I keep wanting to have a bit of a clear out of the wardrobe because I know there's some stuff in there that I do want to donate. But number one, we can't do that at the moment because none of the charity shops are open. And number two, I'm a bit wary about doing it because there's quite a lot of stuff that I love, but that I know that doesn't fit me. And I don't want to, I don't want to donate it and then regret it later. So I've kind of been putting it off, but there's some stuff in there that I do know that I can definitely just get, just, just like um, donate and pass on to the next person. Um, yeah. Duvalo says, well, this year, a lot of holiday trips are being postponed to next year, but on the bright side, you'll have more time to save more money for the fabric shopping. Yes, that's where I got um, some of that beautiful silk that I showed you guys. And then that, that really pretty rayon as well. The The fabric shop was lovely and they had they had pretty much everything in there. They had everything from like canvas, waterproof fabrics, silks, rayons, knit fabrics. They But what they had was they had a lot of everything but a very small selection of each particular type of fabric um but i i mean i enjoyed it because it was it was fun to go and look and it was a night that i think i've told you guys now that um whenever i go somewhere i buy fabric as a souvenir rather than um souvenirs as souvenirs because they you know the, the fabrics then make me think of my holiday like this stripy fabric was from Ibiza and it just, the minute I saw it, it made me think of the dual book bag. So I bought one and that's what I've attempted to make with it. I am going to, I am going to be doing a sew along for this. I've been trying to think about how I would improve the pattern because this was my first attempt. And whilst it works for me for this, it's not exactly what I wanted it to be. So I've thought of a way that I'm going to, um, I'm going to improve it for the next one. I'm going to make another one. Um, and I will be doing a sew along for that because I've got I've got some tweaks that I want to make. Um, let's see. Princess Wade says I have ten Betty dresses I cannot fit into at the moment. It hurts a little to say that. Yeah. Julie says that Wilson's going to love it. He's either going to love it or he's going to be like I'm not seeing being seen out with you wearing that. <laughs> 
I think I have shown you my naked lady dresses before because I hadn't I wasn't sewing last time we got together I was kind of like dabbling but I wasn't doing it as much as I am now so I had a much much more restrained wardrobe but that was only because that was all I could get so yes Dizzy knits and curls. I'm here so late to the party and about to go to work, but I adore the dress. So glad it worked. Thank you. Thank you. Julie says, I like making dresses, but I never wear them. Yeah, because you, you can't wear them to work, if that's right, if I, I remember that rightly, Julie. Nimoy says, I always forget that making things tiny doesn't make them go quicker. Try the different method for finishing neckbands and such. Not sure I like it. Oh. Norian says, fabric makes the best souvenirs. Um, Lorianne also says is Wilson coming to Croatia with us he may come for a either a long weekend or a week I'm not sure he's going to be able to come for the whole two weeks because he has a very limited amount of holiday from his job and uh, he does lots of gigs abroad as well so he needs to kind of balance it between the two um, but yes very possibly you shall meet him Lorianne Sal says Julie is that because you don't go to places that require a dress and Julie says, yeah, seldom go any place except work. And I think you should call them pin-up dresses as the lady's not quite naked. This is true. I said semi, semi-naked ladies. I do have one of them, the one of the uh, Alexander Henry ones. It's uh, Mirage, I think it's called. And the ladies are naked. They just have very strategically placed leaves in that one. <laughs> Lorianne says, but I'll get to meet him jumping up and down again. That's if we're still together by then, Lorianne, but I'm hoping we will be. We were sitting, we were sitting on um, FaceTime the other day chatting and we were talking about some of the dating disasters that we would both experienced from like online dating and, and the different apps and things. And we, we were chatting, we, we talked both about a couple of like absolute nightmare dates. And I was like, I said to him, I was like, don't leave me, please don't leave me. <laughs> Just think you'll have to do this all again if you leave me. And he was like, yeah, same. <laughs> yeah. I said to him as well, I was like, does it really count for being a year if we haven't seen each other for three months? And he's like, well, the time still goes past, doesn't it? It's like, yeah, that's true. And we've been talking pretty much every day, so. Mm. This is yummy. This is very yummy. I'm having, I like drinking my tea first and then eating my rock cakes because the rock cakes are really sweet. And then if I eat them before I drink the tea, then the tea doesn't taste as sweet. And I think you all know I have a sweet tooth. So I, um, I hand hemmed the pink floral circle skirt yesterday. So that's finished. So I don't have too many things. I don't know, I've got four things cut out there and I've got a whole pile of patterns I want to take a second stab at. I've still got lots to do, haven't I? Julie says, of course you'll be together. You're so in love. How long is it now? Yeah, it's it, it'll, it'll be a year next next month, Julie. Caroline says, and it's not because you haven't wanted to see each other. No, this is very true. This is very true. So, and like I say, we've been um we've been chatting on FaceTime probably every sort of two, three days, sometimes longer, sometimes more. And we've also um we've been we've been trying to play chess he always wins i'm too impatient but the um it's we're using chess.com and the analysis of the games is, is hilarious because there's like 11 missed wins and we're both like but where Yes. So, um, yeah. Any more questions? Any anything that anyone wanted to know? Because um, otherwise, it's just me sitting here drinking my tea, which is very nice. Marianne says, "I haven't eaten sugar in three months. Down fifteen pounds. That's what I've been doing in lockdown. Plus exercise with Larry. Oh wow! Well done." Yeah, I need to, I think I need to give up refined sugar. I don't think I could give up sugar completely. I, I still need to be able to eat fruit. If I couldn't have fruit, then I would really struggle. Um, 
but yeah, this this um, sweet tea has become a bit of a habit. I was I was I was having a cup of tea when I was coming back from our early walks. Mum, you know, the the not that I mean, I've been doing it for a month, but they were a lot colder. So I was coming home and wanting a warm warm drink. So I was having a cup of tea. Um, yeah, and we haven't had I haven't had rock cakes or chocolate for ages. We haven't had rock cakes because I hadn't got mum hadn't got any mixed fruit. And I bought mum mixed fruit, so now I've got rock cakes. <laughs> Julie says, I think I'll have to get the hem leveler out for levelling the yellow dress. Uh, Noelia says, my husband and I lived in two separate countries for three years. This was before the internet. We've been married for over 20 years. I'm sure you'll be okay. I think we will be too. Lorianne says, I'm enjoying, enjoying fruit even more now. Oh, I'm glad you can still have fruit. So, yeah, that's something I need to try is giving up refined sugar, the definite. Leslie says, been off sorting my machine. It was playing up. Sorted now. Your dress looks lovely. Thank you, Leslie. Lauren says, how do you like your Benina sewing machine? Would you buy it again or something different? Okay, that's that's kind of a difficult question because I went from a Singer Feather Light 2, which is a tiny, tiny, tiny 100 pound machine, to this. And I've never sewn on anything else. Um, I love it. I absolutely love my Benina. I really, really do. I wouldn't exchange it for anything else that I know of because I haven't tried anything else. Um, so, yeah, uh, the answer, uh, yeah, I, I love it. And no, I wouldn't try it, wouldn't swap it for anything else. I would buy it again. Um, I'm not sure. Well, I, I haven't tried sewing on Mums 880, um, but it's a very different uh, interface and user experience. So, I think if I, I'm, I'm actually looking for an 820 as a backup machine, but they retail for around, uh, secondhand ones retail for around 2,000 pounds. So it's a very expensive backup machine. But um, that would be my ideal backup because it would fit into this table without having to have a new acrylic piece cut for it. It would be something that would be stored away very easily. And I know how it works and I know it's a workhorse and I know I can make bags on it. My other option would be a, um, a semi-industrial or industrial straight stitch machine with a walking foot. Um, but the the downside of that was that they tend to come with their own table and they do tend to take up a lot of room and there just isn't room in this room for one of those. So, yes, I love it and I wouldn't I wouldn't get anything else. Nancy says, bye, everyone. Time to go for a walk in the sunshine. Glad the hangout was a success. Thank you, Nancy. Enjoy your walk. Uh, Louise says, last time I had rock cakes was was in was at school. I'm 54 now. We are going to be doing a um, how to make rock cakes video. We haven't forgotten about that. We just haven't had the dried fruit for a while. And now we have. But obviously, I'm in the middle of filming a live stream. So I couldn't go and film mum making rock cakes at the same time. Mm. Mary says, bye bye to Nancy. Enjoy your day. I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. Um, so I hope that answered your question, Lauren. The only reason I went for Benina is because I was saying to mum, I'm going to buy a sewing machine. And she said, get Benina. I'm like, okay. So I did. My overlock is Benina. My cover stitch is a Bonnet, but the same brand. Um, so, yeah, it's all my mum's fault. Mum made me do it. <laughs> Mary's off as well. Bye, peeps, off to run errands. Yeah, I think I'm going to call it a day as well. We did five hours. We did well. Um, Lauren says, yes, for sure. We've heard so many good things about Benina. I have a Husqvarna, but that's because that was the closest dealer when I bought my bought a machine. I think that's the other thing, isn't it? You need to kind of think about that because our locals, local sewing shop on the island is a brother dealership. And he does sell Benina, but he doesn't sell this level of Benina. He's only a bronze dealer. And so he won't service this. So we have to take this to ours to the mainland to get them serviced. So it's, it's, a, it's a definite expense and trip. But when I bought mine, I was living in London. And when mum bought hers, she was living in Saudi Arabia. So the guy at the local, uh, the local shop is trying to get us to switch over to brother. And it's just like, no, 
everything we have is Benina related. So it would be a really expensive switch to make. Um, but yeah, so Janice says, hello, just got here. Nice to see you. Bye. Oh, hi, Janice. Welcome. I'm sorry I'm leaving. <laughs> Julie says, I'm in Dana of showing my ignorance, in danger of showing my ignorance here, but not sure what a rock cake is. It's kind of a, a, a cake stroke cookie with, with currants in it. Duvalet says, well, you could have the industrial machine when you move to the new house and so on the industrial is a thing of, and so on industrial is a thing of dreams. Yeah, I think that's what we're planning on is like having, having a backup machine when we've got a little bit more room. So yeah, that's definitely for sure. Okay, uh, Julie says, bye Sean, see you soon. Eileen says, bye. It's been a really lovely relaxed afternoon, thank you. Susan says, oh, and just as I was going to put my zip in, it's been fun to see you next week. It's been fun. See you next week. Dagmar says, see you next week. Thank you for another fun fun hangout. Makes for Sunday, makes for fun Sunday mornings. I can speak. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much for hanging out with me, guys. It's been it's been fun and successful. This is finally off the mannequin and it actually fits, which is amazing. So yay, that is awesome. So yes, I will um I will. I will put up a, a hangout for next Sunday because I don't think I'm going to buy myself a weekend a ticket. Um, so, uh, yeah, for those of you that are not going to the sewing weekender, we can come and hang out here. We shall have some fun. I'll probably end up doing, like I said, that brown leafy dress, I think. Well, I'll aim for that. If not, I'll have something something cut out and ready to go. Um, but, yeah, it's been fun. It has been a lot of fun. So I hope you've enjoyed it. And I shall see you all next weekend, but I shall see you in the vlogs during the week. So try to end the stream gracefully. Bye.